What <laughs> What's your T-shirt say? It's the Reading Rambo, but with Star Wars font. <laughs> Oh, there's a lot of problems with this T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Now I'm looking. Oh my God, there's so many things you're mixing here. Yeah, okay, I, I know, I know everything about this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Re- reading Rainbow, Reading Rainbow, of course, Lavar Burton, with the Star Wars font. But what's interesting, of course, is the Rambo straight out of the poster from, uh, from, from Stallone's Rambo. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and Jordy LaForge. And he's wearing LaForge's and he's costume. Wearing LaForge's costume. There's so many things wrong with this shirt. It was awesome. Yeah. It, every he's, time I wear it, it causes issues. He's wearing it because <laughs> we're having the comic book the comic book convention guy on. Wow. Yep. <laughs> it's almost like you knew what I planned this morning when I looked in my <laughs> That's wardrobe. Awesome. Incorporated in 1875, proclaimed as the City of Destiny, Tacoma has maintained itself as the City of Grid. Tacoma kept its in-your-face artistry and individuality that sets it apart from anywhere else in the world. Our never-say-die attitude continues to this day. We are honored to bring to you those who live in Tacoma and its surrounding areas, whose contributions are what bring this city to life. The reputation is real. Welcome to the Grid City Podcast. Here are your hosts. Welcome to the Grit City Podcast. I am Justin. I'm Brogan. I'm Scott. Jeff. I'm Jeff. (laughs) Jeff is trying to deal with uh, a lot of interesting technical difficulties back there, so we'll see how involved he is. I am excited today because we have on Mark Sargent. Mark, welcome to the Grit City Podcast. Thanks very much for having me, guys. And right now, you you are a bit famous for being on Netflix. Yeah. Uh, Behind the Curve about Flat Earthers. Yeah. Uh, Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into this movement. Oh, wow. Okay. I got into the movement back in 2014 when I was looking into just about every conspiracy you could think of, and I got conspiracy bored. Okay. I basically, I ran out of conspiracies to look at, and everybody in the conspiracy world knows about Flat Earth. They hate it. It's the ugly stepchild or red-headed ste- stepchild or yeah. whatever. Yeah. It's just a stepchild. Cool, nobody wants to look at it, and I eventually, it's, you know, it was on my bucket list. It's like, all right, I'll look at this piece of trash, <laughs> and, and, and I'll, I'll be able to snuff it out in a weekend, mm-hmm. right? And that's what I did in 2014. Forward nine months later, and I'm, I'm just losing it. I, I'm breaking my keyboard over my head. And it was the beginning of 2015. And I said, you know what? I can't prove the globe in a court of law anymore. There were too many, too many loose threads, too many open okay. questions. So I said, you know what? The internet hive mind is really, really intelligent. They miss nothing. You know, go to moviemistakes.com if you have oh, any right? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, if a coffee cup moves from one side of the room to the other and the character doesn't, doesn't move it, oh, yeah, you're going to hear about it. Uh, not to mention the whole Starbucks and Game of Thrones things we, we won't get into. <laughs> but um, because that, that's, that was much, much later. So I put a, a series of videos out there called Flat Earth Clues. And I put it out to the, the Internet Hive Mind. I said, you know what? I can't prove the, cor- the globe in a court of law anymore. Tell me where I went wrong. And that was the beginning of an odyssey, which is still happening today with Behind the Curve, the documentary, which came out last year. And it was interesting because watching it, which was it Jeff or you, Scott, that was like, we need to watch this? Man, it was Jeff. Jeff was you, right? Yeah, I I watched it first. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I I watched it last. Yeah. Yeah, So so when Scott said, hey, I got this flat earther guy, and he, he he put out the name. I said, that sounds familiar. And I said, I just watched this last week. This is awesome. So, and it was so, one of those things we didn't even realize until I didn't even realize uh, until we started talking about it amongst ourselves that you are in the in the Washington area. You're from yeah, Washington. Yeah. Yeah. So it was really cool. It's like, oh, shit, we're going to get you on to talk about this because it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah bor- it. Born and raised. Uh, went to Wazoo for a year. Drank my, my first year. of Congratulations. Of, That's what you school. do there. Yeah. Thank you. And then <laughs> I went to Western and was thrown out my junior year for manufacturing explosives on campus. What the fuck? <laughs> Fuck. Like fireworks? <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, as you know, there's a lot of Native American reservations around here. Yes, sir. And by yeah. that, I mean Casino American. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> they, 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 need, they need black market fireworks. And I was good at chemistry. Well, still am. And I supplied that for them wow. and made it on campus. And it didn't... didn't no, that, <laughs> does, that doesn't really uh, go over quite well. No, the university wasn't fond of the whole thing. <laughs> That's funny. We, we know um, a few people that actually 
used to do that in their childhood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> snitches get stitches. Like what? Like what friend of yours? What friend of yours could have dimed you out to the college? Oh, that was exa- you're exactly right. It was a woman. It was a woman who I had dated briefly, and she was going to work for me during the summer. And my current girlfriend said, "No, no, no, I don't like her very much. You got to fire her." Uh... And this girl came to me, and she said, "She said, look, you do this." She literally said, "I will drop the dime on you." Yeah. And I said, "What? You will not." I mean, seriously. And then she did. Yeah, it's hyperbole, <laughs> right? And I find this out from the agents later, the ATF later, and I go, "Oh my god, oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ!" Yeah, because I ask them, I go, "Hey, how the hell did you get my name anyway?" They go, this really angry girl called up the, the, the <laughs> FBI, and, of course, they routed her over to the ATF, and we didn't, we didn't do anything about it. And then two weeks later, she calls back, and she goes, why is this guy still walking around campus? She's from New York. Oh, you know, one of those New York girls. Wow. She just laid into him, and they said, fine, fine. And so they just wrote my, number, my, name, and num- my name down, and when they were just to, it was in somebody's pocket when they went to this chemical company in Colorado. And they said, oh, yeah, by the way, do you know this guy named Mark Sargent? And they go, do we? <laughs> and how? <laughs> yeah, we got a big shipment that's going to head his way soon. It's like, Oh, really? Yeah, and that's yeah, the beginning of, of the fall. Well, so you weren't even trying to hide it. You were just, you were just all in. What, when I was doing <laughs> yeah. when you're doing the fireworks? You were even trying to hide it. Oh, no, no. We had 30, I had 32 people uh, working for me on campus. <laughs> oh, you were like in major <laughs> fireworks. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was huge. What was the name of your brand? Uh, Brimstone. Ooh. Nice. Yeah. That's, a, that's a good one. Uh, yeah, I thought it was it was kind of fun. It, it, it was real. I had. A, I, I don't regret it for a second. I got. <laughs> I can tell you, you're pretty proud of it. If I was gonna do it over again, I would absolutely done. I would have done it the same way, and I would have paid her right off the bat. I would have said, I, "That's what I would have done differently." I would have said, "You know what, Lori? Here's your money." See, w- <laughs> yeah. when about was that? Uh, when I got nailed, or when? Yeah, 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 yeah. When you got I, nailed, I, when you're doing the manufacturing. I started stuff. doing it in '88. Okay, because I was like, I'm like, I mean, if you're doing that in any sort of like '95 oh, past, you were being spending time in prison oh, at yeah, that yeah, point. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was doing it. Windows were closing behind me. Let's yeah. put it that way. So it was probably good I got nailed when I did because. Well, after you were probably yeah, in a post nine eleven world. Oh you yeah, get, post nine eleven world. It would have been. <laughs> you were probably one of those persons where you were the reason why they wrote the rules. <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably. In fact, there was a, you know, there's only five federal judges in the uh, the Northwest area, and turns out I knew the first one that was assigned to me. That was even the worst part. He actually went to one of my fireworks shows down, <laughs> down, down on the beach. Down, like, oh, yeah, I've seen those. On Whidbey Island. No, no, seriously. I, it, it, they said, uh, I, won't, I won't give you his name, but he, the, my defense attorney said, oh, yeah, your judge is going to be Judge Johnson. And it's like, Tom Johnson? <laughs> she goes, why? You know him? I go, no. uh, yeah, yeah. Not only did I go to school, his three sons all went up to Western, but his oldest son dated my sister. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, cool it was a small there, yeah. world. And so wow. I, and I, go, I go, you think he's going to turn down my case? And, and she goes, yeah, pretty safe bet. And so <laughs> anyway. So, so being from a, a, a small town, do you think you were always kind of uh, doing stuff like this when you were growing up? Uh, like uh, getting oh, yeah. a, a collection of people to uh, do your bidding to Tom Sawyer sort of uh, way with uh, the whitewashing of the wall? Well, it, it helps to have friends. Yeah. <laughs> and, but growing up in a rural community, you had, I mean, you really had to work to, to make trouble. Mm-hmm. So like I grew, I grew up on, on the south end of Whidbey Island. And what? It's, pretty, it's pretty rural. You just said some weird shit about Tom Sawyer. Don't you? Did I have never heard that before? You've Please never explain read, that. You've, okay, you've never. No, read I've Tom read Tom Sawyer. Sawyer. Okay, do you realize that he conscripted the entire neighborhood to to paint the fence to for paint him? the fence for him? Yeah. Okay. Whitewashing. Uh, the... Yeah, I just had never. Look at you. Oh wow! I He's know. impressed by me saying words. It was yeah. a good one, though. I, it <laughs> took me a minute. Like, that is some literary trivia, right? Yeah, there. Like, look absolutely. at that. Yeah. But but yeah, I, I mean, it was tough to. I mean, short of throwing rocks at cop cars, you could not get in trouble <laughs> on uh, up on Whidbey Island. And so I had sort of a mischievous. You know, you didn't. You weren't afraid to take risks. Yeah. On the island, and so that kind of carried over where I went to off to different places. Nice. So. Yeah. And so how do you feel that leads you to what you're doing now with the uh, Flat Earth YouTube and, I mean, going to conventions and doing all this, all this stuff? Uh, it, it helped in a way, you know, because, again, I grew up so naive. You know, when you grow up in a really sheltered environment, I mm-hmm. honestly thought there was like one religion when I graduated from high school. I, I had no idea. And then when you went to university, everything just opened up. So I was this shelt- super sheltered kid. And, and so, yeah, it, it, it kind of fueled me. And... Well, especially with the fireworks thing, but when I went off to Colorado to, to play video games for a living and do all that fun stuff, I was kind of 
on my own, just doing my own yeah. thing. And there was no risks to take. You know, there weren't, I wasn't building fireworks. I was just kind of doing the whole tech thing and geeking out and doing super nerdy things all the time. I know, programmer, this is kind of cool because uh, Brogan and I uh, played a lot of video games. Uh, mm-hmm. Quite a bit. Yeah, they still don't... a lot of them. Uh, what did you, what were you programming with? Any, was it like a, a group of people and was it a specific game? Oh, no, 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 no. You got to remember, this was back in the old, the old mm-hmm. days. Yeah, back, in, <laughs> yeah, back in 95. Oh, you know? oh yeah, no, shit. no, there were no pro gamers back then. I was hired as a ringer. So I was hired by a little publisher out of Boulder, Colorado, even though most of the publishers, as you know, are in northern and southern California. Yeah. Uh, I was hired by this little company uh, to, because none of them in the, in the company played games. They were all marketing people oh. and uh, graphics people, but nobody actually played the freaking games. They were just a publishing house for a little company. Uh, the, the main games were a little company out of Tokyo called Little Wing. Okay. Uh, that made pinball games, computer pinball simulations, and they were very, very good. And I won a computer turn- tournament, a uh, worldwide tournament, and that's how I got in. Oh. They, they, they said, it's well, like the last Starfighter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. And so they hired me, and, and they, they, they flew me out to Boulder, Colorado for an interview, and it really w- uh, went well. And then I traveled around uh, to like uh, Macworld Boston and Macworld San Francisco and E3 and stuff like that and, and made the games look better than they were. And that's what I did for that company for a number of years until, nice. until they finally folded. And then I just parlayed that into other tech stuff. That was my mother's favorite thing was to play those old computer the pinball like robot, robot pinball oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. computers. She loved that shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then after that, I, I hung out. Because I, I, I played games, I hung out with a lot of really great gamers. Some, I mean, outstanding gamers. I mean, if, if the Pro Circuit was alive back then, yeah. they would have absolutely been in it. I mean, these guys. One of them, do you remember the, the old game Duke Nukem? Oh, God, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that game. One, mm-hmm. of, my, one of my really good friends uh, uh, won the world tournament on that down at E3 and got a chance to play uh, George, I can't remember his name, Broussard. Uh, his, anyway, he was the creator of Duke Nukem, mm-hmm. and he just smoked him. <laughs> he just smoked him. At one point, George had like a negative number. He was killing himself so much <laughs> trying to get to my friend. Uh, but anyway, so but ever since then, like I still to this day have a Warcraft account. Still play. In fact, the the, <sighs> the guild is called Flat Earth. <laughs> oh, that's the best. And we still we still go out and play. And like the the, the accounts still run. Right. My WoW account is still active. I haven't My, played it. In years. Yeah, I'm I, just paying 15 bucks a month. Are for you no really? Reason. Just stop the subscription. You I haven't even paid it. for the last two expansions. Yeah. I haven't even like just, you you've been using tokens? Huh? No, I just haven't oh, played at I all. Oh, because you, it, you yeah. don't even have to pay now. Nowadays, well, no. If you make enough gold. If you make, I think, 100,000 gold a month, you just give it to Blizzard, and they'll say, oh, yeah, you get your month free. Yeah. And if only my bot still worked. <laughs> yeah, they don't, they see, don't really approve of bots. See, yeah, here's no, the no, thing. they didn't. Yeah. I yeah. got really good at that. Yeah, see, Brogan was the kind of gamer who <laughs> would kind of go through it once sometimes, and then he would find ways to not go through it, but still play, right. quote, unquote, play the game. Well, you had to get all the supplies for raiding, man. I didn't have, you know, I had kids <laughs> and, like, a job. Yeah. I could just turn that thing on, come back, and we got a raiding party worth of potions. Yeah, yeah. we used to like, get stupid with EverQuest. Yeah. Brogan and I used to get really stupid with EverQuest. Nice. That so, was our game. Yeah. I had a friend, you probably heard these stories, I mean, I had a friend that quit EverQuest t- uh, four times, trashed it through all the discs in the trash, Dug him out later. Mm-hmm. He, he could not quit mm-hmm. until until Warcraft came out, and then he was finally like, "Okay, finally something." That was basically us. I had an ex girlfriend that wouldn't date me unless I destroyed my computer. I totally, really? I totally destroyed my computer. Yeah, wow. things you do. Well, whatever you made, you made her cry. Yeah. Oh, her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not even sad about that, man. I was, I was, I was on acid on New Year's, and she was like, she calls up. I know you don't like me, but uh, Happy New Year's, and I was like, Yeah, you're right. I don't like you. Oh, I know. I know. I know. You're I still dick. don't. I still don't feel bad about it, though. Yeah. I really don't. It's all right. Yeah. She's plotting her revenge still. Oh, I'm sure she's she got is. her Steve Buscemi list. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit more about yeah, yeah. why we brought you here, sure, and it's sure. it's the the um, dealing with the flat Earth. Now, for the people who haven't seen the special and haven't heard you talk about it, right. uh, how do you explain um, the concept of the flat Earth to people who are un- under the assumption, uh, yeah, yeah. as everyone else is, that we are in a globe? Okay, the short version is that everybody, or most people in the world, think that you're on this little tiny rock that's covered with a thin sheen of water, which is covered by atmosphere that's spinning through uh, the galaxy in five different directions and five different velocities, and you mean nothing. I mean, mm-hmm. you're just this insignificant tiny, speck. insignificant speck. Uh, you're an accident, part of the Big Bang, and 
that that's just how it is. That's, mm -hmm. what, that's what science says. And we say it's the exact opposite. You're actually in a construct. You're in a flat disk world that basically looks like a snow globe, a terrarium, a planetarium, whatever you want to call it, whatever relates to you, a pizza box. I've had some radio a pizza, pizza box. A cake dish. Yeah, a cake dish. In I was fact, looking at my cake dish. I like that more. more than a pizza box. Well, that doesn't really matter. I, I, I bring it up only because when I talk to different radio people, they, they say whatever relates to their audience. Ah, you know, like, like, yeah, Ru yeah, like yeah. Russell Brand said snow globe, and I go, yeah, let's go with that snow globe. And mm -hmm. another guy said pizza box, and I go, you have a different audience than what I was expecting. <laughs> uh, like a weed container for our listeners. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, no, the, the cake dish, though, was pretty good because, the, like, some of the early 3D models that have been built actually were made with full-blown cake dishes until they could do custom stuff. So, anyway, so it's that. It's, I don't know, 20,000 miles wide. The ceiling on it would be pretty shallow, maybe 3,000 miles high. The sun and the moon are flying in here inside us. Uh, they could be three-dimensional. They could be two-dimensional, but, but they're very, very small. Mm -hmm. uh, less than 50 miles wide. And the planets and the stars and everything else are just pretty, pretty lights in the sky. And so, like the stickers you would put up uh, yes, on your the, ceiling? the glow-in-the-dark stickers yeah, 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 on the yeah. ceiling. Yeah, yeah, Only they're much higher. I have so many questions. I know, I know. <laughs> every, every, everybody does, and that's how it starts. But, but yeah, that's, that's what we say. And, and you don't need a galaxy and a solar system and everything else around it. And, and you definitely don't need uh, calculus and, and trig and quantum mechanics and all that. It's just a simple... Well, good, because we don't understand yeah. that shit well, anyway. That was one of the interesting <laughs> things in, uh, in the special. And, I mean, the special is cut the way they want to special. They want to cut the special. Oh, yeah, they hate us. I, 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 I got that. Yeah. I absolutely got that. But yeah. one of the first things that is saying is you say straight off math is not real. Yeah. Uh, do you believe that? Uh, and, it's or, not, it's... or how do you believe that? Because literally it's just that line. And then they like cut to something oh, else. Oh, yeah. Oh, so... the power of editing. Oh, yeah, yeah, my God. Yeah. By the time. And don't get me wrong. I, I actually enjoyed spending time with the director and the producers of this film. But by the time they got to the end of the shoot... Uh, you know, it took seven months to make that thing. Uh, they were really, really pissed off with the whole concept. And the big reason was, I, I got to throw this out there real quick before you have questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is uh, when they got to the conference, if you remember that part in the conference where the 12-year-old kid walks up to the microphone and he starts asking me questions. Mm -hmm. Well, that's when everything turned for these guys. Up until that point, it was going to be a human interest piece. And when they saw that, they just go, oh, okay. All right, shit just got real now. <laughs> because a 12-year-old a, a is asking about it? Well, yeah, yeah. It? They said okay. it's all, you know, the old saying, it's all fun and games until the kids are involved. Yeah. And it's like, come on. Seriously, it's not like we're targeting kids. It's not like we're doing a marketing campaign with Joe Camel. So don't <laughs> don't give me this grief <laughs> about kids. And yeah. so and so that's when they decided, okay, we're, by that time, remember, they had already shot everything. Everything was in the can or digitally. And so that's when they said, okay, we're going to go after Jared, we're going to go after Bob, we're going to take a few shots at Mark and Nathan, and any shots we can take, we are going to take. Mm -hmm. By the time the end of the movie, you're going to know that we, you know, where we stand. Where we are, yeah, exactly. And, and we didn't even know this until uh, Patricia and I were listening to the uh, director's commentary on the iTunes version. And that's the only that's the only place you can find the director's oh. commentary. And by the end, he oh, got to the end. I'm listening. I'm going. I'm bored. He's not. They're not saying anything. And then they said. They said. Oh yeah, this is the point. And all three of the people that were in there, the editor, the main producer, and the director. Wow. They all, they all agreed. And it's like, really? So you didn't even know until you actually just listened to that. Yeah. That's got to be kind of a, a, a punch in the dick for you at that point. Well, then. it was it was a double edged sword for for us, which was you know yeah everybody in the flyer community hates the documentary. Mm -hmm. They just hate it. Yeah. But everybody outside, remember, I got to go to a whole bunch of film festivals. This thing did extremely well before it got to Netflix. We did oh wow okay. twenty seven film festivals in nine countries. God damn. I know, and I and most of the it time it was very well made. <laughs> it was absolutely it, it, yeah. well considering the shoestring budget. And by that, I mean uh, shoestring from the dollar store shoestring. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was extremely – I mean, it, when you hear it's like, oh, yeah, it took us multiple credit cards to finish this movie, you know that they're you know, running on vapors. Yeah. Uh, but, it was, but I got a chance to go to several film festivals, uh, one in Arkansas, one uh, the premiere in Canada, uh, one up in Bellingham. Go figure. Yeah, right. Uh, Western. My old stomping ground. Oh, yeah, Western. Yeah. Do you still have the Chick-fil-A there? Sorry. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you just <laughs> shut that down. <laughs> Chick-fil-A, man. But they... <laughs> But they, uh, but in the audience, people. The reason why it did as well as it did was, and this comes with the questions part, is the first twenty thirty minutes, people didn't think it was real. They literally oh. didn't. I mean, I could hear them laughing. You know, they were they were laughing at the at almost the, like a Christopher Guest sort of thing or well, going on. Uh, they, yeah, they thought like it was a, like a piece of docufiction. Yeah, and then yeah. all of a sudden. They they realized that we weren't pulling back, and mm -hmm. and and they were going, wait a minute. You could hear the whispers. They're going, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's something on the internet. That I don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> Something really weird and big. 
and it started to freak people out. And I'll give you a real, sorry, real quick story. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The editor of the movie, the main editor, uh, took it to one of his editor friends down in Hollywood. And he goes, like, All right, I'm going to show you something. I'm not going to give you any context. Just watch this. And he watched it. And at the, the, the end, remember, all these documentary guys know each other. Yeah. And so he, and he, goes, he goes, dude, you've been holding on to me. What sort of budget did you have for this movie? And he's going, what are you talking about? He goes, all those actors, they played it so straight. <laughs> <laughs> and, See, that's the beauty is when you don't need the actors. Yeah. And, 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 and the editor goes, no, no, man. No, man, that was real. And, and the guy's all of a sudden, his pupils just... And he's going, what do, you, what do you mean? That thing, that conference down in Raleigh, that, that, that was happened? That was a thing? He goes, yeah, man, I was there for three days. And it's like, mm -hmm. and he had to re reevaluate his entire experience on it. So. Now, when you, when you watch the special and you see the conference, uh, how many conferences had happened before this? Was that like... Oh, you mean that? that no, that was the first one. That was the first one. 500 years? Wow. 300 years before the United <laughs> States was even founded? Oh, yeah, it was a big deal. And... and in fact, even the media didn't take it seriously. They sent uh, scouts. Most people don't know that the media will send recon out first. Oh, yeah. And they'll be, like, walking around just to make sure it's not a bust. Mm -hmm. And, and the, I could see them on their phones. I watched these guys like, yeah, you got to get sent a team down here, like, right now. <laughs> and, like, overnight, you had all these cameras show up uh, from everybody, you know, Australian journalism and French and ABC and BBC. And, heck, Howard Stern sent a team. That doesn't surprise yeah. me. But, but, <laughs> yeah, he didn't show up himself because he knew no. he would. He, you oh, know, yeah. He, he doesn't want to. No. He, that, that's he doesn't want to travel. <laughs> Howard Stern is not yeah. going to do that. He will send people, yeah. yeah. Well, Absolutely. no, in, in something like that, he might, but he would be too recognizable. Yeah. And so. I'm sure so he's, he's in an oxygen yeah. box but, somewhere. Yeah. 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 They, but, they'd only bring him out when they need him. <laughs> but I did, I did, I think, 13 interviews in two days. I even, I missed basically the whole conference. I, I did my set, and then the second I was done, it was like I was just dragged into different rooms. Well, at that point, yeah, because it suddenly hit the, I mean, you're talking about places coming from Australia, France, etc. Yeah. It's hit the worldwide notion there yeah. beyond just the internet. Because I think that's one of the interesting things about the internet itself, for better or worse, it yeah. will bring people together for any like-minded For half prospect. a second until they start making comments on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then it just implodes. And it, it, it's, I think the, the, the internet has been able to boon those sort of things. But it also takes meeting up with all these people to not necessarily prove that, you know, the people themselves are real. But it's also just a good sense of community on that end. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're on tour this year. I mean, after the documentary came out, uh, we, I mean, all of a sudden, all these different events started popping up. Uh, I've done three conferences already this year. I uh, did Los Angeles, uh, New Zealand, Auckland, and uh, Calgary, and I still have six more. Damn. I've got to do uh, Stockholm, Amsterdam, UK, Mount Shasta, Ohio. Mount Shasta. Uh, and then... And then Places full of white people. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> I, have, I have a friend whose wife believes that there are aliens under Mount Shasta. Oh, I know that story. Okay, okay. I, I, don't, I, I don't know anything about it other than that. I made a trek. That's part of the Hollow Earth theory. I, oh. I actually, I made a trek from Boulder oh. to Mount Shasta myself. Just to kind of drive around the place because I had read so many different things that Mount Shasta is a hot spot for uh, really weird, you know, you know, type stuff. Nice. Jeff knows about that. What's the one here, Jeff? Oh, uh, Mount Adams uh, uh, Camp uh, Seti Ranch. Is oh, where yeah, you're going yeah, on you're about trying that to get last us to week. go up. Yeah, there we got to go like up that. there and just sit because they do have free camping, but they they also have like you could sign up for their program. Yeah, I'm going camping on the 22nd. Yeah, you yeah we'll go that. there. Yeah, I'll know. be in, I'll be in Denver. Sorry, Seti Seti <laughs> Seti has a ranch. Seti Ranch, but it's not. Oh, it's not Seti. No, it's, it's not Seti. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, no, it's just yeah, called yeah, Seti. Yeah, Ranch. Yeah, it's like an acronym for something but it's and like this guy like they they, they yeah. say they can summon ufos and they Maybe see biological they, they see bigfoot and a lot of people from different walks of life go there Maybe and weird things wrong. happen to them and it's yeah, crazy there you go bro Maybe well no because it's gonna the bacon me the bacon savior in weston we're gonna go <laughs> And we we hadn't made a for sure plan. Maybe I, maybe I'll pick you up on that, Jeff. You've just been hitting home runs lately with good recommendations Let's for them, dude. Yeah. We, we can uh, call the, the the Bigfoot guys, and maybe they. Well, get, what we need to do is to get to the go. bottom of my Titanic conspiracy that I am in love what? with. What? What is your Titanic conspiracy? I do not believe it's a Titanic on the bottom of the ocean. It's the USS Olympus. Do you oh. know about that one, Mark? 
Oh, the Titanic Olympic Olympic. Oh, is he Olympic? Titanic? Oh yeah, I absolutely believe in that story. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Really? That, one, yeah, yeah, that yeah. one's like not even out far fetched. <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's just straight up insurance fraud. And, yeah. and honestly, when I was listening to the story, I'm going, yeah, I probably would have done the same I thing. I don't know about this one. Oh, okay, real. I'll, I'll sum up up for really quick. Okay. Uh, so before the Titanic, there was a, a boat called the Olympic, mm-hmm. uh, the sister ship to the Titanic. And during one of its test runs, it got hit by a British military vessel. You know, you know, so we swap insurance cards, right? You know, that should <laughs> yeah, be pretty yeah. simple. Except the British military said, yeah, we're not paying. And oh. so they had to pay for it themselves and, you know, the repair. And it never did. You know how you hear the story when a car gets in a severe enough accident. You try, if you don't total it, it never runs right again. Mm-hmm. You know, I had a shimmy and like, and it listed and the whole thing, it was, <laughs> it was in rough shape. And so they didn't know what to do and said, and so somebody came up with this plan. It's like, okay, we're already working on the Titanic. Let's sink the freaking Olympic. But let's rename them. So let's swap yeah. swap the names, oh. and we'll we'll send it out there. The maiden voyage of the Titanic, and we'll get a ship ready out out in the way. Nobody's gonna die. That mm-hmm. was the big thing. We'll get a guy, and that's where it always breaks down, right? Yep. It's the getaway car guy. <laughs> they, 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 <laughs> everybody's in the bank. The getaway car guy's like, "You're taking too long," and he drives away. That's what happened. Where the um, the Titanic was out there, they ran into an iceberg. Everything was fine, you know, it was going, and but the boat that was supposed to come and pick everybody up, and it was filled with blankets. Yeah. And, and life was It was just, prepared. It was prepared. The guy never showed. He's like, oh, nah, what a I'm bitch. Doing it. And so, no, I mean, everybody in the know, he, they ran, ran his, his career into the ground for I no apparent so, reason yeah. whatsoever. But, you know, the people died because of it. So, yeah, it was insurance fraud. That's all it was. It yeah. wasn't anything super sinister. Yeah, that's why they'll never raise anything up from the Titanic, anything that would have a serial number on it. No. Nope. Like, why would you? No. Because yeah, J.P. Yeah. Morgan, he was like, no, we're not going to yeah. do that. And, that and, one got you, huh? Yeah, that, that, was that, one got chat. that was a higher side chat one, dude. <laughs> and, 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 and if you haven't done the higher side chat, you got to get out. Like, that's a good that's, one. That's an invite only. I can't, I can't solicit that one. I mean, uh-huh. I don't solicit anyway, but they've never asked me, mostly because they had uh-huh. Eric DeBay at one point. Eric DeBay is one of ours, and Eric doesn't like me, so... Oh, oh is that the obnoxious artist one? No, that's Matt Boylan. Oh, I hate that guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was yeah, he was in the movie. Yeah. Well, so there was two people in the movie I had a significant issue with. Sure. Him and his behavior is deplorable. You shouldn't treat your Jeff, people like that. Jeff, can you bring that. my bag real quick? I want to I yeah. break out some stuff. But the dude with the nice. ping pong balls and the hammer... That guy should not be around people. <laughs> oh, my God. That's, that, that's Nathan Thompson. He's yeah. really like that. I mean, he's, that's yeah. not an act. No, really? I, I, there, there was no way that was an act. No. Like, it, I was just like, oh, man. I think I sent them a picture. I'm like, oh, this, that, it's not this guy we're you interviewing, did. right? You did. <laughs> so, we're interviewing that guy. I'm going to have to drink a lot. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but it was really cool what he could do with the hammers and the ping pong. One of our great sponsors is the Union Club in Tacoma. This is the co-working space down here that has all levels of membership from the cafe membership all the way up to a private office, events and happenings. And if you wanted to host an event at the Union Club, they have a great hall that is semi-private, 2,400 square feet, wet bar and small deck and fits 200 people standing. Pricing for members are always cheaper and to become a member, all you have to do is go to www www.unionclubtacoma.com So you have a visual aid. I imagine this I love this you. because you we've got the uh, we've got you, you the live stream. Up. So if you're a wonderful I'm Patreon, take a picture of it. Mm-hmm. yeah. But if you're a wonderful Patreon, you could watch the I live know, stream. Like, you can go to patreoncom slash Podcast, and for just four bucks a month, you can actually check these things out as well. Ooh. See it live when it happens. We send out <laughs> messages. What are you doing? Oh, you're getting the Grit City uh, podcast stickers, Ooh, which neat. you also get. We'll give you a bunch of those, oh, Mark. Right on, right on. Um, but uh, we get those to our Patreons as well. Also, if they're hanging out and checking out the Boot to Boot, yeah. we're going to be doing a pub crawl. And, Mark, you should come to our pub crawl. When is it? Like, it is happening <laughs> oh, June 29th. This is really cool. And we're going to need this for the questions. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll hold on to it for a minute. Yeah. Uh, there's a, if people want information, they can go to our social media and they can ask us about it. But we're going to be going from the Flying Boots and all the way down to the Rhine House. So we can drink a boot at the Flying Boots and then mm-hmm. drink a boot at the Rhine House and probably boot ourselves at that point. Yeah. There's going to be some prizes at the camp. So bar. now you're, you're, on yeah. my, you're on my speech clipboard now. Nice. nice. Oh, that, that is, is awesome. super cool. That is awesome. So you did bring out some of the uh, visual aids. Props. Yeah. Uh, and it's one is just like straight up. It looks like a big coaster. Yep. And <laughs> so well, yeah, that's the one without the dome. Okay. So that's just kind of a. It, but uh, it shows what it what it would be looking like. And then yeah. around. And so 
one of the things is around the edge is it's the ice wall, correct? Right, which would be Antarctica. Okay, so Antarctica is just the entire ice wall. Oh, yeah, and it'd be way bigger than this. I mean, meaning the white part of Antarctica would be massive. It would be actually out to here. But yeah, because it's one of those travel sort of things. It's like people are saying, oh, we're going around it. we got to uh, yeah, make sure. Yeah. And, that, and that's, by the way, the most common question. Again, it's like, oh, you know, there's so many different questions, but it's like, <laughs> why doesn't the water fall off the edge? Why isn't it like the cosmic? Where does the water go? That's yeah, the, one of the questions that I have on yeah, a coat, written the, on a coaster. The, the, the so let's hit that one. Okay, let's set up the question then. So Brogan was at the bar yeah. last night, and yeah. and they jumped me. They thought that like I made a guy mad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you made just, a just guy bringing mad. it up. Oh yeah, yeah. Even, and well, it's got a it's got a knee jerk response. Yeah. So so the the whole story Sorry. is. Uh, the Bacon Savior's grandpa passed away, and he called, and he's like, hey, man, I'm kind of bummed out. You know, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Um, well, you want to grab a beer? I'm like, sure, meet me at the Apogee, which shout out to the Apogee people. They said they were going to watch us on the, on the live stream. Cool. And Hopefully they are. Yeah. Uh, and so I was just talking to him about well, what I had going on because he's been on – he's one of our sponsors, and sure. he has a security company. He's a great guy. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to him, and as soon as you said – as soon as I said the word flat earth, the guy sitting behind him tensed. Like, and I noticed that. I'm like – that guy's body, you know, he just yeah. he just kind of tightened up. Oh, yeah. The guy next to and I'm just telling him about it, right? And the guy next to me kind of scoffs. I'm like, what the fuck's going on here? <laughs> I'm upset this guy, too. And then Flat so, Earth. But, but then they wanted to know more, right? So I got yeah. to I, I, the guy to my left yeah. uh, and the guy to my right, Jeremy. Jeremy was the guy on the right. Sure. He said, oh, oh, I'm glad you don't believe that because I was about to have to move to the other side of the bar. I'm like, oh, just you wait, my friend. <laughs> I have, I am prepared for this conversation. Right. So I start, I explain, you know, that there's this documentary, they should watch it. Yeah. It's an interesting theory. This is, this is my layman's explanation as to what it is. You sure. Know? And I, sure. So I busted out these uh, coasters because oddly enough, a coaster is a really good well, depending on what kind of coaster and the quality of the coaster. But yeah, these are like... How uh, many coasters do you have? There's a couple of them. So we got some, we got some uh, I mean, coaster I spent, questions. I spent an hour with people collecting questions. That's actually a good thing. Co coaster questions. That could be like the name yeah. of the segment. Well, <laughs> That's what Jeff called no, it. Yeah. <laughs> coaster questions? Coaster questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're so as you can that. see, this is not my, uh, no, my finest good. work. But this is the earth and it is flat. Sure. And I put it beer glass over the top of it and i right. said this is basically the gist of how this works <laughs> i mean yeah it's better than a pizza box shit well yeah. i mean it's, yeah. i was working with what i had i macgyvered it together yeah you, know? you did no that's actually excellent so i set it down and i set the beer glass on top of it and yeah. i just kind of explained re regurgitated the best idea that i could from the documentary that i watched sure, sure. and they all said nah what the what and you just saw the like all of a sudden the table behind us was involved in this conversation and everybody was just interested but some guys were really mad They're like are you gonna punch him in his neck i'm like nobody's no. gonna punch anybody <laughs> in anybody's neck good guy That's there's, there's very there. little violence in flat earth just so you know yeah well there shouldn't be yeah but some of the questions were okay how does climate change work in a bubble dun, dun, dun. i'm amazed by the way how many people bring up climate change to me especially in, over the last year really yeah, yeah in the first two years nobody really brought up climate change uh, okay, the easiest for me, I actually believe in some sort of climate change. Now, if it's if it's cyclical, that's fine. But in a like a domed thing over there, think of it this: you've heard of the term greenhouse gases, obviously. Mm -hmm. Well, doesn't it seem a lot more intuitive if it's actually a greenhouse instead of you know the impossible? Oh, look at that! At, oh at, shit! <laughs> Duh. That's awesome. at, at, at atmosphere versus yeah, vacuum yeah, space yeah. type thing. And and if it's an automated system, which I do think parts of it are, I think it's trying to compensate for what we're doing in here. I mean, you got to remember the internal combustion engine known as the car. There are billions of those things running at any given time, and I think this system is trying to compensate for it. So yeah. Okay. Then yeah, some like of the the other question. Yeah. Uh, the seasons, which I guess goes along with the climate change. This sure. is all from sure, the, sure, sure, sure. Uh, but so if it's summertime here and right. winter there, right. how does that work? Well, no, I mean, no, that, no. that just seems and uh, well, I guess with the greenhouse gases. Well, no, it's not just that. It seems like even with like a terrarium type thing. Well, in a, in, a, in a terrarium, by the way, the sun and the moon, which were so incredibly tiny, and the, the one bad thing about, I don't like about the flat earth model is when they have to portray the sun, they have to draw it to where you can visually see it. Mm -hmm. But it, when you visually see it, it's several thousand miles wide. And we're saying, well, the sun and the moon are like 50 miles wide. So they're super, super small. But if they moved around this thing like a, like a needle on a record player, they're also going in, and I know you guys probably don't do much mind.
final. But it, oh, they, we understand that. We're okay. old, we're old, old, old enough to understand. <laughs> <laughs> you remember eight remember, tracks? <laughs> they're coming back now. Yeah, so uh, they, so it goes in and out. And I also don't think, by the way, uh, it's also, again, part of the system, whereas the sun is not the only heating device in this. You've also got the underwater conveyor system, which is the water. Uh, you've got the jet stream, which is up above, and then the magma system down below. So as far as creating sy- se- seasons, mm, it's all part of the system. Interesting. Hmm. I'm just looking at some of these questions and going, man. Are guys. they legible? Yeah, they are. <laughs> like, like, so so there's a South Pole, right? Where's the South Pole on your... Oh, yeah, yeah. There is, the no, South there is no South Pole. And that's where it gets really, really weird. Yeah, right? Because but, so, like, there's... Mag- Santa has to live somewhere. There's mag- he's the North Pole, he, dude. He's the North Pole, dude. No one lives in the South Oh, sun. there's no South Pole. No, no. No, no. So, so the North Pole, which would be the magnetic center, right? Okay. You have, you have uh, uh, polar bears, uh, by the way, only live in the North Pole. In case you were going to throw that out there, yeah, I was wondering. Uh, about that. So the North Pole is at the center, but and that's magnetic north. But when you get out to the south, there is no freaking magnetic south. In fact, I watched a video just earlier this year, and he wasn't even one of ours. It was just so, like kids were asking people in Antarctica, "It's like, what does a compass do in this in in Antarctica?" He goes, "Really, not much of anything." And that confirmed uh, oh. a subject matter expert that called me from uh, he was uh, from Australian military intelligence. They're not a big group, but heck, I'm going to take what I get. Hell yeah! Right? And, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not you, like it's like United, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, United States military intelligence, Australian military, you know, like like I was out in New Zealand, and they don't even have an. Uh, uh, they, they did lose the emo. War. They don't even emo have an war. air force. So, but anyway, uh, but so it, you'd think that eventually it, on, on a globe. On the terrarium? On the globe. On the globe. Oh, the globe, eventual, globe. Oh, you have actually a little globe with you, oh, too. Oh, yeah. Cute. Of course I could. I know. <laughs> isn't, isn't it adorable? So if you go south of the equator on a globe, eventually magnetic south. Remember, because it's bipolar, not the weird mental yeah. thing. But it, it, that means eventually south is going to take over, and it never does. And the Australian guy said that. He goes, he goes south, south never dominates ever, ever, ever. It's only north. So the compass is only ever point north. A compass is only yeah, point yeah, north, yeah. But, for, but from our standpoint, we don't know any difference. So when you're circumnavigating this thing, the compass magnetic, uh, magnetic north in the center of this thing, the compass looks like it always would. It looks perfectly normal. You would never, ever know the difference. It's a very, very clever design. And this is like, like these questions, I, I'm going to assume some of these are like the ones that you had originally, where you're like, I'm going to disprove this, oh, and yeah. then now I'm not able to. I sat on this nine months before, and finally I, just, I give up. I give up. I, there's obviously things, but I've treated it like, a, like when you're turning at a test, like a blue book, and that was, you were, I was pretty sure I aced it, but I knew there was maybe something out there, and that's what I was waiting. I was waiting for the other shooter drop. I was waiting for some academic to call me and say, okay, you forgot to carry the two. You can shut down your YouTube channel. So, <laughs> so is McMurdo base then just sitting out on the ice wall somewhere? Uh, yeah, it's- yeah, yeah. It's, it's in a little, a tiny little bit, but not very far. Not, not very far at all. Uh, the, what, what's really interesting is, again, this thing has got to be at least several thousand miles thick because our Navy was working on this. This is not, this is not secret information. Admiral Byrd was basically flying his own planes out there for the better part of 30 years. And then finally when he did that 1954, and I know they didn't really show it on the, uh, on the documentary, the 1954 uh, CBS show, uh, The Long Jeans Chronoscope, where he said, oh, yeah, the place is just made out of money. We're going to be there for the next 100 years. And then he goes very, for his very next mission, which is Operation Deep Freeze. And then they shut down Antarctica for all time. The, the Antarctic Treaty is bulletproof. Nobody, no corporation gets to go down there yeah, yeah. for any reason ever. Mm-hmm. For up until, in fact, it's not even up for debate until uh, the year 2041. Yeah, no country can claim any sort of no, claim no, to no it land, at all. no land rights, None. no mineral rights, whatsoever. nothing. And you say, oh, well, it's environmental. It's like, not in 1959, it's not. We didn't. We didn't know what environmentalism was in 1959. America, we were like what thirty cent gas and double cheeseburgers. Yeah, and, people didn't give a crap. And these and doctor, driving tanks. Doctors recommending smoking. <laughs> Environment, <laughs> environmentalism? No. I mean, seriously, smoking advertisements were on the Flintstones. Oh yeah. Steve from the Apogee wants to know: <laughs> <laughs> Can you actually dig to China? No, no, and that's a really, really great question because people say, uh, I know anyone listening to the audio don't know what I'm doing, but if I'm looking at this disc, they say, how thick is this thing? Mm-hmm. How, how thick is the flat earth? And I go, we don't even know, you know what this is because the deepest hole ever drilled, which is by the Soviet Union and the Germans, was only eight miles. 
ever. The deepest hole we've ever drilled as a civilization is only eight miles, and you're thinking, okay, what does that mean? Well, if they say that it's 4,000 miles to the center of this thing, well, eight miles is barely a fraction of nothing. a percent, yeah, right? Nothing, yeah, absolutely nothing. So why do we keep seeing these wonderful cross-sections with the red and orange and yellow and white bands that are perfectly separated? Why don't you just say, in fact, they used to, back in the old days, say in small print, we have no idea what's going on down there. <laughs> mm-hmm. But then they just took that away, and it's like, okay, fine, you took it away, but you know, when you're nine years old or you're 20, you're going to think that's gospel. Yeah. So... And it's one of those things where it's so, like we don't know, beca- and like a lot of it's just kind of filling in the blanks with theory, right? And everyone is now, like you just said, taking that to gospel, right? Right. And by the way, to, to, to that question, so so the answer is, uh, can you dig your way to China? No, you can only dig eight miles. No, no, yeah. all right, That's all right it. then. Um, gravity. So so <laughs> if everybody believes that gravity is being generated because right. the Earth is spinning, we're floating around in the ground, and right. In the universe, right. how does gravity work in this thing? Dun, dun, dun. That, by the way, that is the number one answer that people will always. It when when they start getting befuddled, they'll say, "But, but gravity," you mm-hmm. know, or the other one, it's like, "But science." It's like, <laughs> but science. no, seriously, I but hear that science. a lot. But science, it's like, <laughs> what? It, what exactly about science? And, and then they finally come back to gravity, which is okay. Um, Neil deGrasse Tyson said it best, and and I will say this. In fact, I'll put that in the book that I'm working on. Uh, which is, I will say that Neil deGrasse Tyson is extremely good at his job, where he said that gravity, we can't tell you, mainstream science can't tell you what gravity is. We can only tell you what it does. Mm -hmm. We can only tell you the symptoms of it because we can't replicate it. You'd have to have a really advanced technology, some sort of unified field or electromagnetic field, but we won't go into that right now. So he says that gravity, mainstream science says gravity is some invisible magnetic force, magical force that pulls things down to the center of a globe. And I will say, well, gravity is just some invisible magical force that pulls things straight down. That's, that's the difference. Now, some people will come in and say, well, it's also density. It's a combination of density. Some people don't believe in gravity at all when it comes to the flat earth theory. They'll say, well, it's just density. I'm going, well, it can't be all density. And, but what I mean by density is the air that we're breathing now is kind of like a, a thin version of water. You know, it's mm-hmm. four parts nitrogen, one part oxygen. And things rise and fall. So if you mm-hmm. dig a helium balloon and you let it go, it's going to rise. That's density. That's an example. It's like lighter things will f- go upwards. No different than if you took a beach ball underneath the swimming pool. It's going to always pop up. Yeah, totally. So, but I say, well, density can't... Uh, can't deal with all of it so, because if you're in a fighter plane and you, you know it's a sealed caps you know sealed cockpit and you pull it up well you're sealed it's not like density is pushing you down into the seat it's also got to be some sort of gravitational force gravity by any other name so there you go okay nice. <laughs> I, like that one. I like that one so yeah. that was for you steve <laughs> thanks steve. steve was very excited about this and by the way and, and by the way when you're done i want to i want to mention that i want to react to the uh, the bracing when you heard when you said he, whoever it was tensed up yeah when he heard that the was term jeremy flip. okay yeah. jeremy i want to i want to me- mention I, okay I wanna, we'll come back I wanna, to that i want to yeah. address that the bible and how does religion fit in with the with this theory uh, i don't know that's the question that, the bible um the no bible. no it's no it's good it's actually in fact no it's a good thing you brought it up it's one of the chapters i still haven't worked, finished yet which is at least half of and i can only really speak for the americans and canadians and some of the europeans the english-speaking countries at least half of the community in english-speaking countries are hardcore christian when it comes to the flat earth and the reason is because they, they immediately jumped into this and mm-hmm. said, okay, how does it relate to the Bible? And, and a lot of pastors are having a really, really tough time. In fact, there was a, uh, the largest church in Canada uh, is trying to toss one of their members. Uh, I just found this out just a couple weeks ago wow. be- because she put on a flat earth conference in, in Calgary and they don't want to be tied to it. Oh, um, wow. it the, here's, the, here's the big problem is that most of, in fact, 99% of, we have, we've had people, of course, go with, with a fine tooth comb through the Bible. I'm not going to quote chapter and verse here, even though it's Sunday, <laughs> which is, <laughs> which is there, every other story in the Bible, and we'll get to a, a few of them real quick, but uh, except for one, talks about a flat world. Uh, it's a flat earth Bible, with the exception of one, which is Isaiah 40, 22, he who sitteth upon the circle of the earth. Well, in the ancient Hebrew, circle is not globe, it's not ball, it's not sphere, it's a completely different word. It's circle. Circle it's can be this. Circle can be your dinner plate. A coaster. Yeah, yeah. Circle could be two dimensional. Uh, every other story though, I mean everything from Genesis, uh, you know, the firmament separating the waters above and waters below, the story of Joshua, where he asked God to hold the sun and the moon in the sky for an extra day so he could slay more enemies, which seems a lot easier to do in a snow globe <laughs> than it would be this. Uh, and my favorite, of course, the Tower of Babel. 
which is, okay, if the Tower of Babel, you know, by an advanced civilization that was way before us, which nobody talks about, which was supposed to be this bridge to God, bridge to heaven, well, where's that going on a spinning globe? You're talking about a needle that's sticking outside of a globe, which is spinning Space like this. Space elevator. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and also going around the sun and also going around the galaxy. That needle is not staying in the same place twice. But if it's on a flat, stationary, snow globey pizza box thing, it's going one way. It's mm-hmm. going one way. It's going up. And so the pastors are having a really, really tough time. They're using Isaiah forty twenty two as like it has veto power against the rest of the Bible. That's the only thing they're hanging on and with their fingernails. And I mean, not to completely and utterly disparage any sort of religions or something like that, but there's a lot of those that will take one line and mark that as exactly what it, the entire thing or what their right. belief is going to be. They're gonna. Right cater that towards whatever they want, the narrative that they want there. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. And they, they're having a tough time with it, mostly because of uh, the parishioners. You know, mm-hmm. the, the, they don't, you don't want to be, and there's a few pastors that single that have gone, taken the leap, but do you all of a sudden want to be that pastor that goes in front of the congregation? It's like, okay, <laughs> we're, we're a flat earth church now. Yeah. I'd be cool because yeah. there's, too, there's too many people because it's spread so far and wide. There's too many people that are asking pastors in their spare time off, uh, you know, off the record. It's like, look, what does it mean? What does it mean? What does the flat earth mean to our church? What does it mean to the Bible? Because they think it's the, the newest and exciting, most exciting thing in religion. And, uh, and, and by the way, it's not just the Christians. I mean, the, the other four religious houses, uh, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, and, and Islam, they're all on board in the same thing. You know, well, three of them, you know, say, share the, some of the same stories anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway. And so, I mean, that's kind of funny because it also goes back to the, the tensing up uh, in yeah. terms of going back to that because it's like, yeah, so you get a whole group of parishioners being like, yeah, I do you want to be, I remember the, the, the church groups are very competitive. You could use that against a church. It's like, oh, yeah, XYZ church down the street. They believe in flat earth, you know, but you don't. So recruit anybody yeah, you can. Let's, yeah. get them, let's get them out of there. Well, you <laughs> remember, I had that same problem with just talking about Bigfoot, like because we had the yeah. Bigfoot guys on. I, I talked about that on the last episode. Just people mm-hmm. want to fight yeah, the you. The punch you in the neck guy. Right. He was just like, <laughs> yeah, there was, was a guy so who got angry. violently angry at him for believing or at least we were just having. Not even yeah, believing. we were just having Bigfoot people on. Open your mic. Oh, yeah, sorry. I was just talking. I was talking about it at, at, at a bar with friends. Just, hey, we had these Bigfoot guys on, and they got angry. So, yeah, I imagine. How does nighttime and daytime work if, we're, if there's no curvature of the earth for the moon to hide behind? Excellent question. Okay, first off, uh, and, and that, this is a hard one for people to get their heads around. Because yeah. the first thing, it's not because once you do the flat earth, that's just the beginning of it. You also got to get rid of the sun and the moon, how you know it. So the sun is not 400,000 miles wide and 93 million miles away. And the moon is not 2,000 miles wide and quarter million miles away. They are super, super tiny and super, super small. So when they, they just go off into the distance because everyone would say, well, how do you even have time zones? You know, wouldn't the sun be shining on everything all the time? It's like not if it's not one, it's if it's really, really small. And the other thing is the thickness of the atmosphere. Believe it or not, it counts for a lot. Uh, a good example would be if you go down even, oh, I don't know, 200 feet in any sort of ocean and try to find the sun. Right. Yeah, the sun gets, nothing. you know, all of a sudden gets weaker and weaker and then it is gone. And, and remember, we're talking about clear water. The same thing applies with vast, you know, pretty long distances when it comes to our atmosphere right now. You know, remember four parts nitrogen, one part oxygen. Now, if our atmosphere was ripped off for whatever reason, if you took this snow globe and, and turned it into a vacuum, oh, yeah, then everything would change. The, all, all visual dynamics would absolutely change. And the sun, you would, it would be up for a much, much longer time because it's not punching through a lot of uh, what I call thin water. Mm-hmm. I like that one. I I love these questions, by the way, Brogan. You need to do more coaster questions. These are good. Yeah, well, yeah. You should just like canvas the bars and just start. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of do that anyway. So, so, yeah, yeah. so if you can't fly around, so you, so if you can't fly around the world, right. how does flying around the world work? Oh yeah. Well, okay. First off, when you're flying around, again, if I take my finger, you could, and if I don't have this, I just use like a dinner plate. Yeah. But if I take my finger and draw a big circle around the dinner plate here, mm-hmm. technically, I've circumnavigated it. You know, yes, I, can't, you I came back to the same spot. Does that mean that this is a globe sphere ball? No, it doesn't. But you're saying, well, wouldn't my instruments tell me that I, that I did something weird? Wouldn't it be like, you did something really funky there? It's like, no. First off, remember, the GPS system, otherwise known as the Global Positioning System, was mm-hmm. designed by the United States military in the 90s. It is a U.S. military system. It is going to tell you exactly what it wants to tell you. And second, of course, is magnetic north. That's the big one, which is magnetic north reacts the exact same way. I know on this, you know, you're flying actually straight. You're not making a really, really slow left-hand turn or a really, really slow right-hand turn. It's like NASCAR. Yes, exactly. Yeah, (laughs) turn left. (laughs) 
I, and, and they give awards for that. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> no, it's fine. Uh, but but when, when it comes to this, it's so vast that you would never, ever notice the slow left-hand turn or slow right-hand turn. And your instruments are not going to tell you it anyway. I love that. All right. Can't, we've asked the Dick to China question. Yep. <laughs> we've asked about Mercado Bass. Um, what is... Mc, McMurdo Bass? McMurdo Bass. Mc, Mercado? <laughs> <laughs> A large Mercado Bass. Bad, bad, bad hand. Is that the Mexican Bass? <laughs> so... So Mars, yeah, right. We yeah. look through a telescope, or you right. see pictures of Mars on yeah. telescope. Yeah, yeah. Is it another flat Earth out there, just turned on its side, or is that just a painting? No, on the it's side just of it? it's just a light in the sky. Uh, I've had so many amateur amateur astronomers come at me and say, "Look, I've seen the moons of Jupiter." You know, I've, I've seen them through my telescope. I'm going, "Okay, fine. Take a pair of binoculars, go to a planetarium." You know, I know that dates me. Nobody goes to planetarium. Oh, uh, planetariums are awesome. I know, they aren't they? they? It's are. like Laser Floyd. No, <laughs> nobody, <laughs> no, nobody went during the normal week. And that's why the, the weekends were always such a big moneymaker for them. Oh, like, God, yeah. Laser Led Zeppelin, Laser Floyd. Laser. Anyway, so um, we, if say you take a pair of binoculars to a planetarium. And I, I told people this. And I say, okay, look at Jupiter. I go, does it look more or less spherical? with your binoculars they go that's not the point you're in a building i go yeah that actually is my point because you because you're walk in a building <laughs> yeah yeah exactly. you, you walk out of that building you're just not you're just in a much much bigger building and then of course it's like well who built it who built it that's on one of these coasters oh okay we'll get to that then okay is that the next one <laughs> uh, sure yeah, 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 well yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah okay well yeah the first i gotta mention that that uh, we're talking about something that people did not build you our civilization had nothing to do with the construction of this place yeah uh so the, the question is who did and it's like all right well you're talking about a very big question here and you can only go one of two paths are we talking about an advanced civilization that is much older and much more powerful than ourselves and you say well is it aliens it doesn't really matter they could be frost giants i don't care you know, if you're going on that path, or yeah. it could be the divine, but then you're kind of just splitting hairs because one man's advanced tech is another man's deity. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, we could just be somebody's pets. You know. Yeah, you could be. I mean, aquarium. Like, Seriously, like aquarium, ant farm. Yeah, yeah. like for example, <laughs> that thing over there. It's completely self-contained compared to this. This requires the, they're roughly the same size, but this requires a massive system behind it. You need a solar system with a sun. You need a, a galaxy around that and a universe around that. Remember, if this was actual size, the solar system alone would be, I think, two thousand feet in every direction. Yeah, and that's a tiny, tiny, and that's tiny a tiny, earth right there. that's a tiny, tiny Earth. Uh, and you know, you're talking about huge amounts of you know calculus and quantum mechanics that needs nothing who's to say there isn't seven billion little followers in there right now Just i mean saying. you're not wrong well when you start thinking about this you know size of atoms and no, yeah. you know smaller yeah. things all right starfish <laughs> prime does that mean anything to you it's just written down <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard of Starfish? Is that a secret Prime? code? Is that, is that one of like the long distance ph- photography things from uh, from Hubble? I think so. Okay. Uh, well, it's, it's same same question. In fact, I had a guy from from the UK. He just he just beat this one to death. He was he just every question. It's like I saw Saturn. Blah blah blah. I saw Mars. I saw the circle on Jupiter. I'm going. It's all the same answer. You keep asking me the same freaking question. It doesn't matter. Whatever you're seeing in the sky is a really really high resolution system. I mean. What are we at? 4K, 8K now? I think some are 8K. Well, it's not 8K. really 8K. All right, imagine a million K. Of, imagine yeah. Mandelbrot resolution. That's what we're talking about here. Something that could actually adjust to the technology of the telescopes that are looking at it. Astronauts. The space station. <sighs> yeah. Oh, it's the Mission Impossible line. Oh, it's way worse than you know. <laughs> <laughs> the, but what I'm saying is NASA, the only reason NASA was created was to keep this thing under wraps. Uh, NASA's, look, and I'm not saying that, that these guys are wearing black hats and twirling handlebar mustaches. I'm not saying that. Uh, you know, they're doing it for God and country. Most of them are ranking military people. I mean, you got to remember, everybody that's on the, uh, by the time you get off the ISS, you're a full bird colonel in the United States Air Force. And some, and some have been like lieutenant generals. So if you make it that far, if you know anyone in the military, you know, mm-hmm. by the time you make colonel, you basically know how to follow orders. These guys, look, they're doing it for God and country. They are told, look, you're going to fake something. Now, do they divulge to them the reason why? No. I think they told that with the Apollo program, which is why all those guys turned to the bottle and became recluses. You know, they felt super, super guilty about it. Because I think, I do, I do think the movie The Right Stuff, they were looking for heroes. And I think that's what they signed up for. And it's, it, it seems like, uh, especially with like a military thing, suppress, suppression of information to avoid a panic situation sort of thing. FDR, you know, one of our late great presidents, mm-hmm. he, his quote was, I think, the best. He goes, only tell the public as much truth as they can handle. Mm-hmm. And I think back in 1960, we, people said, well, would you have told the world in 1960 when you figured this thing out? 
No, no, you wouldn't. I wouldn't have done it either. I, I honestly would have been like, yeah, I'm going to hold on to this until... Well, you even yourself sat on it for nine months trying to figure out what the hell was going on. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, because your whole worldview gets shifted. Yeah, so how long does the military sit on this? It's like until they can figure out a way to put it out to the public in a way that they can control. And honestly, look, we're in that spot right now, which is why I think it's coming out. You've got high-speed internet, social media, and six billion smartphones mm -hmm. that are out there. I mean, you're in a perfect spot to, like, you know, the old criminal thing, you know, let's get our stories straight. You could spin the same story to everybody, and they'd all have it in 30 minutes or yes, less. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Got any other questions there? Uh, the only other ones were about the ring of fire, like lava flows and the tides. Okay. Uh, I'll do I'll do both of those, and i got to do the tense, the bracing thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Which yeah. is, okay, That's so, the last question. Okay, so the ring, the ring of fire, the lava, look, uh, the lava's, people didn't like that clue as much when I put it out there because I go, look, every system has got to be artificial, including the magma system. And they say, well, you can't. And that's really tough for some people to get. It's like, oh, yeah, how can you fake a magma system? I'm going, look, if you have a pet tarantula in his terrarium and you have a light bulb, you have a little water and everything, you're not going to leave anything to chance. It's all going to be under your design and whatever it is, even if it's a heated floor, you're going you're gonna to do that. Sorry, th that's the short answer to that one. Um, what was the other thing tides? The yeah, tides. Oh, yeah, the tides. Yeah. Tides I actually like because... The tides, everyone says, oh, well, it's got to be the moon, right? It's this 2,000-mile-wide object, which is doing It's like, no, no, the moon and the sun and the stars and the planets are just a clock system. It's just that the moon is telling you when it's going to kick in. The last thing you would ever do from a design standpoint, I'm telling you guys as a geek, is that you would never take an extremely powerful directional gravitational force and put it on an object that's only 50 miles wide. You'd never, ever do that. It would be problematic to say the least you would control the tides no differently than you can tr control gravity in the physics engine that revolves around it which is if you have a gra if your gravity system is artificial it's on here the tides are just a slight adjustment to that and you do it down below and and when when you say artificial it's like <coughs> even going into some other being like whomever created this thing like right. it doesn't matter at that point it's artificial to them but since we are in this i mean it's what is what you're saying is artificial is just natural to us because right. it's always been there yeah, in yeah. our lifetime. Exactly. If you know it again, which is I love the movie. If you watch the clues, I love the movie uh, M Night Shyamalan's. I know people don't like. Uh oh, it. oh, here we go. Oh, I know. Mm. Well, no, I he, <laughs> please say the village. Please say the it village. It is the village. Oh, I it love is the village. village. No, no, I mean, he he wrecked a lot of stuff. No question. I mean, that's what you do when you win an Oscar your yeah. first time out. It's like he's golden. Mm -hmm. and like no, not so much. So, but, but the village was brilliant yeah, I be love the village. because the concept, and that really ties to this, which is all you did is take kids out to the middle of a wildlife preserve and you can tell them any story you want. And like you said, then it's natural to them. Yeah. And here's where it gets interesting. What's interesting is when the parents die, nobody's lying at that point. Everybody is living. They could all pass polygraphs at that point. Because it's like, yeah, yeah, we all live here. It's the year 1800 and such and such. There's monsters in the woods and you should mm -hmm. never, ever go out there. And it was, it was brilliant to me. And, and, but I liked it as a movie initially, but when I saw this, I was going, oh, yeah, that's – I mean, Truman Show was one thing. <laughs> but, the con yeah. but the concept of, of telling people you can do stuff without the Truman Show if you wanted to. So Interesting. Yeah. I love that. Um, let's talk a little bit about the projects that you have. So you started with the YouTube page. Right. Let everyone know about your YouTube page. Right. Well, how, by the way, how, much, how, how long do you want to go? I don't, I don't really care. Oh, yeah, we can see. When's the next one coming? Okay, well, uh, not until one. Well, we got a while. Okay, okay. so let me, let me do this. Um, let me do the, uh, uh, the bracing thing. Real, oh, yeah, yeah, real, yeah, real, yeah, yeah, the bracing thing. thing. Yeah. And, here, and here's the reason why I, I mentioned this, it, because I've seen it over and over again, but the brace part really caught me, because when I first looked at when a first Flat Earth video was recommended to me on YouTube, and I clicked on it, I braced. I actually flinched, and I got a visceral response. I mean, I actually got flushed, and I, thought, and I caught myself doing it. It's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, I'm your, your average tech geek, right? I have clicked on a lot of weird, funky stuff on the internet. <laughs> we all know what we're yeah. talking about. We've all been there, right? We've clicked on stuff we probably shouldn't have. And, and even then, I wasn't really embarrassed by it. I was, like, looking over my shoulder maybe. But, but in this case, I was, like, I was really embarrassed. And it's like, why? It's flat earth. Why would I get embarrassed about this? And then I was like, wait. And then I started digging into it. The more I, I dug into it, it was the conditioning. And that is, think about it this way. Okay. Um, in the American classroom, I can't speak for other countries, but in the American classroom, we all know what's in the corner of any given room. You have the American flag up top, mm -hmm. and somewhere in that room, you've yeah. got a big globe. It is a right? globe, yeah. And they are synonymous. They are there, right there, right? And that is there from age six until the time you graduate from high school. And remember, when some people, you know, by the time they graduate from high school, they're willing to fight for that flag. You know, and yeah, of course, they didn't know about America and all this stuff, but it's the flag. It's the icon. Oh, yeah, I'll fight for America. What's the difference between that and this? Almost nothing. For them, visually, this is iconic to them. It is like, this is, America is my home, or America is my home, but this is my home. Yeah, and this is where it is on my home. Yeah, and, yeah. and people get really, really bent out of shape about it. <clears throat> Excuse me, where 
there was a guy that called me up on a, on a radio station, uh, and it, you know they were taking calls. We're not taking calls, are we? No, we're not. Oh, okay. So they were taking calls, and they said, uh, and, he, and he goes, how dare you? How dare you tell me the world isn't what I think it is? Because it's the only conspiracy you can't run away from. If you don't want to look into 9-11 or, or JFK or Boston bombing or Sandy Hook or any of the other stuff. You don't Ooh, have... I love Sandy Hook, too. <laughs> well, we can, we can get into that later. <laughs> uh, uh, but but you, can, you can walk away. There are some secrets that can be hidden in the desert, and you don't have to look at them. But when it comes to this, you have to resolve it, which is once it gets in your head, it's really like a marble in a paint can. Mm -hmm. And and you don't and you can't get rid of it forcibly. You either have to be like, okay, I'm just not going to look at it anymore. You know, like decide not to smoke anymore. I'm, yeah. I'm just not going to buy cigarettes anymore. Or I'm going to, or I'm going to be on board, and that's why we have a 99% retention rate. No lie. Really? Absolutely. Oh yeah. If you get if you get into this once you're in, because you can't go back. There's nothing to go back to. It is the best example of red pill, blue pill mm -hmm. I've ever seen. Which is you know the line, which is of course it's like w even if you could go back. Would you? Would you? Yeah. I mean, because seriously, once you, tr I've seen people try to go back, and once they try, it's like it just loses its shine. It's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's <laughs> interesting. Uh, anyway. like, I, I love the fact that you you talk about the uh, the ninety nine percent retention rate because it goes into community. And we talked about like the first convention, and now you're going to all of these different yeah. things, yeah. and you've got all of these different appearances. You've got a uh, a, a convention coming up in uh, October, I believe. There, are... November, November the, is the, 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 the yeah. big the big U.S. one. Aside from the Mount Shasta one, uh, the big U.S. ones in Dallas. Mm -hmm. That is done by, by the same guy that did Raleigh and the same guy that did Denver that I walked out on last year because of the whole Logan Paul thing. Oh, which is, uh, I don't want to get into. Yeah, yeah. But that, luckily, we didn't cover that in the documentary. You don't. Did anyone even know Logan who Paul's Logan trash? trash. No. Yeah, he's yeah, trash. Logan Paul's trash. Nobody should yeah. ever talk to him or. or well, then let's not give him our time. Oh, good, there you go. good. So, but uh, but he's the so Dallas is the big American conference, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I can't wait. It's it's gonna be a lot of fun. When when you when you go to a conference like this, uh, we go to conventions. We go to Norwest Con almost every year, right. and it, it's a big party atmosphere. Is it that sort of same thing when you're going oh, to these? Yeah, <laughs> it's, well, no, it's way way bigger in terms of energy, uh, because you're, for a lot of these people, it's the first time they can be in a room where they're not being judged by friends and family and coworkers. I mean, there's a lot of you know the knee jerk reaction. Is it's like oh, you're some sort of idiot or read you know yeah. they question your education system. I mean, look at Kyrie Irving. They went after. Uh, oh yeah, they hit, yeah. Uh, was, it, was it Duke that he went to? I mean, they anyone that the public that comes out about this, they're like, what school did you go to? Yeah, and where uh, did you learn this? <laughs> yeah, but the energy is off the charts. People don't sleep for days, uh, even if they're in their hotel room. It's like I got to get back down there and talk to more people. Uh, they close the bars. I mean, they, they'll drink and party, but it's mostly just. You know, they just talk, 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 talk. And the meetups are like that, too. We okay. knew that. When the, the regional meetups that we do, they're just impromptu. We've done a whole bunch up in the Northwest. Uh, they're like that, too, where people, we, you know, they go to the restaurant. Oh, it's gonna, we'll, we'll schedule, like, two hours. <laughs> re restaurant's closing. They're flipping the table. They're like, like come on, girl. Yeah, it's like, get out of here. Get out of here. It's like, oh, are you seriously? It's like, where can we go? So it's a lot of people that uh, are building relationships and community right. by going through this. And right. I think that's one of those things that anyone's looking for yeah. uh, in those sort of terms. Everybody wants to be a part of something. And this is one of those things where you, it's kind of a double whammy, double, double barrel, which is first off, if anyone had any doubt about having a purpose in the universe, even though if you don't know what that purpose is, all of a sudden it's like, oh, yeah, you get a purpose now. You know, the universe isn't this weird, you know, huge, impossible thing. No, it's super intimate. You're on it and you're here for a reason. And then everyone's like, oh, a reason. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and they don't know what that reason is, but they're searching. They're searching for it. And the other thing is, of course, yeah, when you're there with people, it's like, I, yeah, we're all in it for a reason. It's like some sort of reason. And, you know, if you're on the biblical side, you know, you've got a whole different track. I mean, yeah. if you're if you're already a strong Christian. You become like an ultra Christian mm -hmm. because of this. And if you fall, and I, I got to tell you, I, I got to mention this. I have had so many people in the uh, in the hardcore Christian community that said, "I've never seen a recruiting tool like this is." Really? Oh yeah, because people. Wow. Come, yeah. People, okay. people that were away from the church, they're back. And honestly, and I, I will say this, uh, even though like I'm I'm the freshman recruiter for this whole thing, the uh, I. I fell away, you know, doing the tech thing and, and doing as much stuff as I did. I fell away. I didn't go to church for years, and I still don't. But I, beca I came right back to spirituality, which was, okay, <laughs> you know, because if it, was built like, if it was built like this, then it's not organic mm -hmm. in any shape, way, shape, or form. It was built like that, which means it was built by somebody. And whether, whatever side you pick, that means it was built by somebody. Now, does that mean it's the divine? Not necessarily, you know, unless you're in the hardcore Christian. But at the very least... 
whoever built this uh, is one step closer to knowing God's phone number than you are. And that's one of those things, too. I mean, yeah, as compared to uh, ants or a, a tarantula or right. a fish in, a, in, a, in an aquarium, aquarium yeah. it's that same sort of thing. It's right. like we are still the same set. You got to check it out. I know. It's cool. That was made. That was really cool. I, that I, was really I, neat. I haven't even had that for, I think, like three months. The, uh, there was, was a really company cool. out of Italy called PowerCoin that makes silver Power coin. Power coin. Power coin. Some, something on the bottom as well. And, and yeah, it's an actual coin. Oh, wow, it's it actually, is. It's, it's actually, actually yeah. yeah. It's like a two-ounce silver coin. Great Where conspiracies th- coin. Exactly, part of their series. Uh, I think they just started the series because of this, actually. <laughs> and they said, hey, would you take that with you on interviews if, if, we, uh, if we sent one to you? And I go, like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I will. <laughs> you kidding? That'd be awesome. And they go, I kind of want to buy one just to put, keep it around my house to Those freak out my in-laws. <laughs> 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 like, I was looking at that dude that, with the cool motorcycle and the thing. and, all, and his Oh, little, yeah, Chris Pontius. Yeah, his fancy little thing. I'm like, man, that'd be one hell. Like, in that coffee table? Oh yeah, that, like yeah. all right. Yeah. That's the kind of like because I don't know how how on board I am with any of the idea of this, but God, that's some good brain candy. But you just throw it out oh, there yeah, just yeah, to yeah. make people visually. Question. Visually, mm-hmm. it is an eyeful. Uh, yeah. He he went to that Raleigh conference and his show his his booth, which was all they were all lit up. It's all LED stuff. It's just it was just amazing. It was looking like a fireworks show. It was it was really really. <laughs> but not that kind of fireworks. Not that kind of fireworks show. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah. Good, good call, good. Yeah, yeah. We, we got to take a break. Oh, we do got to take oh, a okay. break. We got to take a break. All right, we're gonna take a break because we are gonna come back and talk with you a little bit more okay. about this. But yeah, we got to refill our beers and uh, probably go to the bathroom. Yeah, and p- probably pay some bills. Oh yeah. The commercials. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Grit City Magazine was founded on the notion Tacoma has good stories to tell. On their site, gritcitymag.com, you'll find tons of information about the history of our city of destiny articles on what artists and makers are doing today and all kinds of other tacoma stuff there's even more cool shit on their social feeds at grit city mag on facebook and instagram and be sure to look for their quarterly print magazine it's about damn time tacoma has shown some love thanks to grit city magazine for helping do it plus they've got an excellent taste in names Oh. You, have you seen that? Is it good? That have you five, been watching Chernobyl? That fi- well, it's only a five-part miniseries. I haven't because right? everyone's saying that it's really, really depressing. Yeah, that's my wife won't watch and it. Been, she was like, I heard it, it was is, good. People said it was really good. It is terrifying. Well, it's got what's his name, Skarsgård in it. Yeah, that yeah. guy's awesome. Yeah, oh so, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the, the father from Thor. You know, yeah, yeah. He's in, <laughs> but but you don't really care. No, it's an all-star cast. I mean, it is real. I mean, it's all it's an all British production, and yeah, it's really freaking depressing uh because you you don't realize how bad it was and yeah. how, how, how bad it could have been and and I, I know we have to go but I, I have to mention this which is i have no doubt after watching that and i haven't even gotten to the fifth episode fifth episode doesn't air until monday uh that the fall of the soviet union was in no small part because of what happened here really uh, yeah it cost them Dearly. Oh I mean, wow! I'm gonna have to them, watch that. It cost then. them huge amounts. I've, of, I've read about Chernobyl, but just articles and whatever you find. Oh man, like it that. was the follow up. Forget about forget about just evacuating Chernobyl. The, all the all the money they had, they had to plow under so many hundreds. And so th- let's just keep everybody that's now listening. We're recording again. Yeah, we're recording. All right. Oh, so right. We, okay. we were just talking about Chernobyl, oh, the, yeah, Chernobyl the, series the series on on HBO. We were talking about Westworld. We got. All yeah. excited during our break, so but I want to continue on the conversation about Chernobyl. Oh yeah, so well, I, just, I wanted to catch everybody <laughs> else up. So the point was, yeah, <laughs> if, if, you, if you feel if you feel like you're too happy today, go watch a couple episodes of Chernobyl because mm-hmm. it is just brutal. And and yeah, I think they ran out of money. I, I think it, it literally they spent so much and it, they killed a lot of people. Yeah, and they yeah. just didn't tell the the po- the problem that the Russians have, and you see this with different fields. Oh no, I lost my beer. Is they I wanted to save face. They never oh, want to look bad yeah. in front of other countries. Absolutely. Now, I'll, I'll give you a quick quick example of that. Was when they were trying to get the freaking graphite off the roof from the core. <laughs> it was exploded, right? Oh Jesus! And they were trying to get the graphite off the roof, and they the, the robotics were failing. They called the the West Germans, which of course they didn't want to do because you know this was in the middle of the Cold War. Yeah. And they want, didn't want to save face, and so they didn't even tell. Them and so they the the West Germans sent them a police remote control police robot and it died within 60 seconds because oh, the, the gamma radiation just torched oh the circuits, God. right? And what they said was they said, Well, it was rated for 2,000 radigens or whatever it was, and that particular area was getting 12,000 radigens. And the point was that the Russian government, because they did not want to admit how bad it was, 
lied about that, even though they knew full well that Roa was going to fail. Because they, well, if the West Germans know, the Americans were going to know. We're going to know, and so yeah, it's, it's just, they were just hoping that there'd be a miracle at that point. Yeah, but after after the fourth episode, you'll know if you watch it. When you get to the fourth episode, I was so down. That I had to go watch one of my happy trailers for Flat Earth. <laughs> I had to sit down. It's like, what's the most inspirational trailer I have? Crank up the music. And it's like, okay, I'm feeling better. Yeah. That's like some so, of this stuff is heavy, man. Shit. Yeah. How do you feel about Nova? Like PBS's Nova? <sighs> Wait, the old version or what they have now? Yes. Um, <laughs> well, I mean. I don't watch it much because PBS is a huge science backer. You remember, I've, I've, I did a segment with National Geographic. But, like, all of, all of science is wrong? No, 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 no. Okay. But I don't, I don't really watch it much. So there's a very interesting – so we, yeah. we donate five bucks a month to PBS, and you get access to their premium app right. on your Fire Stick or whatever. Oh, really? Right. Oh, yeah, it's great. It's hmm. totally worth it. But on Nova, they actually have a really cool thing about Chernobyl when they bu- built the shell over it. They yeah, made a whole the, documentary of how, oh, they, how yeah. hard it is. The, the sarcophagus. sarcophagus. Yeah, the yeah, sarcophagus yeah. over that was so – Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm, now but, I'm depressed but, to watch Chernobyl. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the time you get... You got to remember that episode five is when they finally kick in the sarcophagus. But up until that point... You don't know what's gonna. It was just yeah. a, it was just a nightmare because everyone was in such denial. Everyone wanted, even the the lower end people like when like the wait re- a minute, so Chernobyl goes all the way up to present day because this is some shit they just did last year. Like this oh is yeah, a whole yeah, thing yeah, yeah. Well, that's they, the like, that's the, dome the over it. that's the new sarcophagus. Yeah, oh, okay. the old sarcophagus. I mean, yeah, they, I mean, it's been a problem for thirty. It's never. <laughs> it's, to, yeah, it's, it'll never not be a problem. Yeah, it's never not going to be a problem. But even like the the regional uh, administrators and politicians, they were lying. They were lying to their people above them all the way up to Gorbachev because he was the guy that was doing the thing back then, because they wanted to save face. No one wanted to admit how bad it was because they were afraid of repercussions. You know, like the guy that supposedly you know individual didn't... repercussions. Exactly. Well, like, I mean, because the Soviet Union back in the eighties. Yeah. I mean, there were firing squads, and like yeah. you know, some of the people that were involved, the ones that didn't die of cancer, you know, they were shot. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was, and mostly because they it cost them a huge, huge amount of money and resources. And I think that's one of the big contributing factors of why the Soviet Union is no longer there. Wow. I don't know. And, you, you, and you, and when you watch this, you'll understand it. You're because you're you're doing the numbers in your head. And you're going. That cost him a pretty penny. <laughs> and, and this that cost, wasn't cheap. Yeah, that wasn't that cheap. Wasn't. Yeah, that, you know, like when something breaks, you hear, you know, it's like, that, that sounded expensive. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was like all the time with what would happen there. Anyway, so. So, so Scott, you're into conspiracy theories. I yeah. am. Yeah. 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 Drop us one. Yeah. Drop the beat, dog. Yeah. Well. Oh, man. You just put me on the spot. I know yeah. I did. I, I don't, I don't, can't come up with any right now. Well, like, you want me to rattle uh-huh. off some? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah I, so I love all some, conspiracy theories. So, what are theories, some, man. I mean, uh, some of the other conspiracy Conspiracy theories that I'm not going to say that you believe in, but you're knowledgeable of, and how do you? All of them, really, really. <laughs> well, that's how I got into flat Earth. Okay. I was, in fact, I was even starting to get into stuff like the Hollow Earth. I love Hollow Earth. The Hollow Earth is how <laughs> Hollow Earth is how I got into flat Earth. Okay, because I was looking at Hollow Earth, going, and that's how I got to Mount Shasta. You know, I was like, yep, oh yeah, yep, Hollow Earth. Yep. And then Admiral Byrd, but that's when everything went sideways because Admiral Byrd, who's tied to the Hollow Earth theory because he went up to – took this rickety plane up there in 1926, supposedly turned into this journey to the center of the earth thing. I'm going, ooh, I want to know more I about that. that movie too. And then <laughs> all of a sudden he goes out to the, to the Antarctic, and that's where he spent the rest of his life was yeah. just in planes in Antarctic, just flying around. And so – but other conspiracies, I don't know. My favorite, my top ones, uh, you know, JFK is always a good one, Pearl Harbor. Always a good one. Um, small ones like Sandy Hook, if you want to talk about that. Yeah, Sandy but, Hook's one I'm very interested in. But be, but I do have – before we even get into Sandy Hook, I want to mention there is a, a – I have a conspiracy. In fact, I was into conspiracies enough. I had enough knowledge on them. I, again, I like some. I don't like others. That I even came up with one on my own. I have an exclusive on one of them. Really? I do. I want to hear your exclusive conspiracy Ready? theory. Ready? Yeah, 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 yeah. Panama Canal. Wait. Exactly. You, what about you, it? Yeah, exactly. That's the. It's like yeah, what, what about it? It's, it's a, a thing. It's, it's a, a thing. Canal that yeah, it's a connected canal. the uh, yeah. oceans together and, for transport. And exactly, and it's still wor- and it made yeah, the, it's it still made, working. It's made, made the Americans a lot of money mm-hmm. uh, before we finally turn it over to Panama. And who knows what sort of you know money things? Oh yeah, we're in. still making. Yeah, money. I, I think don't don't money. they use the dollar in Panama? I, I believe the currency there is the U.S. Oh, dollar. So. <laughs> but it's it's a classic definition of a conspiracy, and it's not exactly a sinister thing. It's for the greater good. And let me explain real fast. The greater good. The greater good. Oh, yeah. Shot. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hot, that was hot fuzz, yep, right? Hot fuzz. Yeah, hot fuzz. I love that line. I and people, love I love it when, uh, when like, movie reviewers throw that in there. The, <laughs> the greater good. He's like, shut it. So um, he, uh, I'm sorry. So what happened was, so, like, let's take a big engineering project like the Hoover Dam. 
right? A big, big thing. Lots of cement, enough cement to, you know, to make sidewalks from here to forever. Mm -hmm. And during that, the, the total number of people that died during the construction of the Hoover Dam, I think it was like 70, mm -hmm. which is what you would expect. And like people falling, ah, yeah, you know, the yeah, cement yeah, yeah. is like, oh, he's not coming back. Yeah, OSHA wasn't around for that. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, and so it's like 70 people died during Hoover Dam, right? And that was mostly because of falling. Well, the Panama Canal was just one big ditch, you know, some, you know, that was lined with cement. You know, yeah. how, many, you know how many people died during the construction of that? How many people? Better part of 6,000. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they're part of the uh, cement then at that point. Well, I think it's no, 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 fuck. no. And, and you say, and you say, well, that isn't, that's not, not and I go, and, and you're saying, Ooh, that's sort of interesting. And I say, yeah, but they, they died of uh, malaria and yellow fever. And you go, uh, and you're going, oh, well, yeah, that makes sense yeah. because malaria and yellow fever. And I go, yeah, but here's, here's where the conspiracy part comes in. I go. It, and you're going to say, well, it's not like they knew that 6,000 people, men, you know, Americans were going to die down there. And I go, yeah, they did. Because we didn't start the Panama Canal. It was the French. The French oh. started in the late 1800s. And because, you know, French were on top of it. They're like, oh, yeah, this is strategically, I mean, everybody knows it's the strategic military choke point of all oceans. And they lost so many men. They lost over 22,000, I think, Jesus. to where the French people were like going, you know, the rumors were starting to spread. They were protesting. It's like, you know, sons and fathers were dying, you know, and this yeah, was they would go and never come back. They're never coming back. And like there was a whole like little cottage industry of like cadavers for universities coming that was Jesus. coming out. Of it. it was bad. It was yeah. super, super bad. I had heard that about the malaria killing so many people at the Panama Canal. I didn't. So what's the conspiracy part? Well, okay. Well, the conspiracy part is the French left. It was like, ah, screw it. They put down their shovels and they left. And the Americans like, hey, hey, let's get down there. Yeah. And they went down. The point was, is that the Americans knew that they were going to kill 6,000 civilians. Oh, yeah. And they let it happen anyway. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, in fact, yeah. they would have let, let it go for even up to 10,000. And you're saying, well, and it's not necessarily a sinister conspiracy, but it's just to show you what people do for the greater good. It's like, look, we're going to finish this thing no matter what. It's, it's the, the, the cost-benefit analysis. Yep. I exactly. just recently went to uh, Weird Elephant at the uh, Grand Cinema rewatched Fight Club. Yep. And oh, yeah. it just reminds me of the, the I know insurance that line. I, expressive. I, I, like, know, I know it by heart, which yeah. is if the cost of us of the settlements is less than the cost of a recall we don't do one yeah mm -hmm. yeah, yeah absolutely and and don't say you can't put a price on human life you absolutely can we yeah. do, we've been, been doing, doing it since every, life began yeah, yeah every day <laughs> so the point was is they didn't tell the guys going down there remember this wasn't military these were engineers like yeah go down there and it's like you should have probably told them, oh yeah by the way you have a one in eight chance of catching <laughs> malaria and dying and yeah. you know that's like huh then they probably wouldn't have gone they probably then, wouldn't have gone then you don't get the progress that you get and that's one of those other things too that i don't think people necessarily realize that a lot of our leaps in technology have gone due to human suffering oh, yeah yeah and and, I, and people don't realize that in the comfort of what we have now and real quick i mean every american every major american war is based on the schoolyard principle of hitting somebody in the back of the head, and when they turn around, you point at the guy next to you. Yeah, it is literally it. that simple. It is the oldest, one of the oldest tricks in the book, and that is every major. I mean, think of every war we've gotten into, with the exception of the, the Revolutionary War, which is a whole other thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when uh, the battleship Maine blew up, and all of a sudden you got the Spanish-American War. So we bl we blame Spain, um, the Gulf of Tonkin. Uh, oh, I'm gonna the Alamo. That, that's always one of my favorites. <laughs> when people say you can't put a price on human life, it's like, well, Texas wanted to be their own country. They couldn't take Mexico by themselves. So they cut a deal with the American government. The, the Alamo was sacrificed. And what would you get? 200 men. You got, uh, let's see, what was the exchange rate on that? You got Texas, Arizona, New, New Mexico, Mexico, because there used to be an old Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, oh, that yeah, worth, and, and that worthless piece of real estate called California. You know, <laughs> huge trillions of dollars in real estate for 200 guys. And yeah. So I, was like, eh. I know. I know it's decisions there. It's kind of dark and, and not so nice. But look, it happens in the military all the time. There are men that are used as bait. Yeah. And, it's, you know, it, you just don't know who yeah. it's going to be. And they can't tell them who it's going to be. Otherwise, you're not going to go out there. Yeah. Exactly. I don't, don't want to be bait. <laughs> no, I don't yeah, want to yeah, be bait yeah. either. Yeah. yeah. Oh, one more thing about Flat Earth. Yeah. Falling stars. What's that crap? Yeah, like meteorites oh, or oh, uh, oh, meteors. Um, or... Uh, one of my co-hosts actually said it best. He goes, he goes, that's just like throwing rocks into an aquarium. That's all it is. I mean, it's part of the system, meaning you use, I don't know, high-speed railgun technology, piece of metal ore, fire in a shallow angle, and make sure you don't go next to any major cities ever, which is why that Russian thing like four years ago got yeah. really dicey. Yeah, that was well, like somebody, somebody would fall asleep with a switch on that one. <laughs> all the Russian dash cams now are helping out with all of those different things. Seeing yeah. that uh, across different ones, you're like, oh, okay, so that's shit. just programming. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just, well, and remember, you're not aiming. That's the one thing I always love about like shooting stars and meteors. It's like nobody has any footage of anything landing. It's always just something streaky, streaking across the well, sky. Well, it burns out. Yeah, well, it burns out. But wouldn't you think eventually you get sort of a side of an Ar- Armageddon type thing? You know, where you know the size of a school bus or whatever it is is going to come down. Remember, we can't only track supposedly so much of the sky. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's part of the system and it works pretty well. We had that lady on from Los Alamos that was that her job is tracking things out in space. Mm-hmm. With a radio. Oh, God, I forgot about her. She was great. <laughs> that was, Is that uh, one of those old bonus ones? That was a Nor- yeah, it was the first Nor- Con. Norwest yeah. Con one. Nice. Yeah. yeah, she 3D models like um, asteroid impacting with each other. She said that nice. because they're so big and such high velocities, they act like um, water. Oh. Yeah, they, they have fluid momentum when they hit. So it's fucking crazy, right? <laughs> All right. So, so let's, uh, did you wanna- I like, I like that, that conspiracy that we knew that we were going to lose people. That's pretty good. I mean, it's pretty solid. Yeah. I mean, it's really based Makes on... Sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's sad that we can all just be like, yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. so break okay. down Sandy Hook. Okay, Sandy us. Hook, real quick. I can, oh, I, you know this is going to get us thrown no, off no, no, and demonetized a, off everything ever. Not necessarily. Do you it's, care? It's, no, no, I know you it's, don't care. It's, we it's, don't it's late in the anyway. broadcast. Unless you put it in the title, uh, most people miss it. Mm. Uh, and the algorithms don't pick it up. No, no. Uh, Sandy, Sandy Hook for me was a real strange thing because as I was watching it, I initially, uh, you know, like everybody, it's like, oh, okay, that seems plausible and then you start figuring out the details but here's the there were three things that absolutely threw it off the rails uh uh, what i tried to do is i put myself into other people's shoes so i put myself in the in the government's shoes or Mm -hmm. whatever organization i treat it like an op yeah i say this op was blown in 20 minutes and here's how i got blown they they forgot about one thing and that was the traffic copters Everything else actually worked pretty well. Uh, you know, they got everybody there and everything was organized and there was nothing on camera. But the traffic copters, remember, they don't have to go through traffic. You know, and they had a full tank of gas. It was first thing in the morning. So they were there hovering. You've seen the footage from different yeah. things. They're there hovering, 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 hovering. It's like, we're not going anywhere. They're filming, they're filming, they're filming. And nobody came out of the freaking building. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a problem because if you want to try to evacuate 600 grade school kids out of a building, uh, with a thousand parents at the gates, by the way, where where were the thousand cars? You remember, you, you mm-hmm. double it. You know, there, there should have been a traffic jam of biblical proportions up there, uh, and it, and it didn't happen. But I, in fact, the challenge I put out to anyone, I say, okay, I will PayPal you a thousand dollars right now if you can show me ten seconds of a, ten seconds of video of any video of a child being carried out of that school. You won't find any. In fact, there's only like three still shots of the entire thing. And we all see it. They're like two, like some kids touching their backs, walking, walking around where there's agents with like no guns. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of walking them through them and going, okay, so somebody took three pictures of a drill and those were the only three shots they used. There was no video. But what, to what end on something along those lines? Is why it, would you do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, I mean. Take your pick. I mean, it, it could have been just, I mean, there's a couple ways you could go. I mean, a standard fear beat. Which is something scary is happening. You need us. Yeah. So, you know, or it could, you know, it could be a gun control thing, I suppose. But it was a regional op. It, whatever it was, was absolutely. It was not. It was not supposed to be uh, affecting everybody nationally. It was supposed to start as regional, and it was not getting much traction uh, because, again, you didn't have any kids. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the, one of the other things was it was the perfect kill ratio. And a lot of people don't know this. In any sort of war or conflict, there's always dead and there's wounded, right? 20, 20 dead, 60 wounded, 1,000 dead, 4,000 wounded, you know, casualties. This was the only shooting in the history of shootings, mass shootings. Uh, and you can look it up. It's on the chart with a perfect kill ratio. Everybody that got touched by a bullet died. Everyone. So did you get hit in the shoulder? Die. Hit in the toe? Die. Ricochet off two walls and, and grazed your hand? Dead. You know, and that never ever happens. And the reason why is because kids make terrible witnesses. You can't have kids. They, they learn that from other things. Yeah. yeah, you can't have kids in a hospital bed, you know, saying, no. you know, they're terrible. I mean, unless you have professional child actors and you're not going to grab them out of the Disney machine for that. So, it, sorry. And I put that challenge out to anyone. I said, let's hear you, $1,000. And that usually shuts them up because you should have seen something. It takes, I'm sorry, let me end on this. To take, to get 600 grade schoolers out of a school first thing in the morning you would have to clear rooms and you're going room by room and yeah the adrenaline of these cops they would have had one under each arm they would have been carrying them out no one would have been walking out of there they would have carried not calmly <laughs> no no not calmly yeah. and you never saw it would have taken hours hours to take 600 kids out and by the time and by the time they they got them up to their families up at the top of the hill you got to search all the surrounding areas they would have cordoned that that place would have been locked down for at least half a day those kids weren't going anywhere they would have kept them in that room until they figured out if there was multiple shooters it would never happen yeah and that by the time but when the traffic sh- copter showed up 10 minutes i mean they were there you know it was like crow as the crow flies it was gone it was over 
it was completely over. It was, it was like people were just walking around having smokes. None of the emergency vehicles had their lights on. It was it was a nightmare. I mean, logistically, you're looking at this thing going, yeah, they, they missed the whole freaking thing. And then, of course, there's some of the CGI footage from. Oh, sorry. One more thing. Real, real quick. And I, I don't want to be the dead horse here. But the other thing, if you, if you have any other doubt, this usually shuts the, the women up. Uh, no offense. Which to the women. <laughs> oh, no. no, 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 because they, they, no, because no, no, women, women do. They I thought get, you were gonna make a slapping sound. I was gonna be like, dude, you cannot do no, that. No, That's no, no. fucked up. No, which was no. It, but no here's why: women kind of they they can sense the, you know the BS thing, which is uh, look up a, a quick little video. You can do it on Google anytime you want. Uh, called um, uh, Robbie Parker smiling. Or Robbie Parker laughing. You know, he was one of the parents of one of the six-year-old uh, girls. Mm -hmm. And uh, CNN completely screwed this up. And again, it was a blown from, from second one, which was he was going to come on CNN 24 hours later and do a little press speech. You know what he's talking about, right? Well, the problem was is that Robbie was either misinformed or he was just a terrible D-list actor. And he didn't know that the, the cameras were already live. So he was joking around with his buddies, couldn't, smiling, you know, not, not, didn't lose a wink of sleep. This guy should have been a train wreck. Yeah. And he's just laughing, laughing. And then finally gets him to the podium. He's like, oh, okay, we're ready. And then he, you could see him getting in character. He goes, okay, all right. My name's Robbie Parker. He gets all sad. He's like mm -hmm. going into, you know, the whole method acting thing. Uh -oh. And the problem was, is that he, you know, CNN didn't know what to do. They're like, uh, he's that live. That just went out. He's, he's, <laughs> yeah, that just went out. And so in, in every other version after that, they, they cut out that entire thing. They just made sure they only started running it from the podium. And it's out there on the internet. It's not hard to find. And and that usually... People, That's savage. Yeah, when I, people, I want to watch it, that stuff now. I don't know I've, that much about it. I've, so. sh I've shown that to uh, women, and they all do the same thing. As soon as they see him smiling, they start squinting. <laughs> squinting at the, at the monitor going, mm. okay... This guy's a lying asshole, <laughs> and it's like, and then you know it starts, and then of course they get really, really mad. So. What you got, Jeff? Well, I, I just wanted to, the, the, to uh, show my appreci appreciation to Mark no. because people like you take all the the arrows and the slings, and that's my problem. I'm pretty wishy washy. As soon as I have an idea, and somebody says no. I said, oh, okay, okay, I'm, I'm fine. Because, you know, I, I can't take the, the, the sling. So we do appreciate people like you who do have an yeah, idea I mean, and go coming, with yeah, it. People are coming at you um, a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. I, I assume that you try not to read the YouTube comments on your channel. <laughs> I uh, want to sleep at night. Yeah, yeah. So, so no, I do not. How long ha have you been doing your YouTube channel? Uh, the YouTube channel, well, I didn't really, you know, like a lot of people, you know, you just sign up for a YouTube channel. Yeah, when you're you doing videos. So I, the first video I ever made was in 2015. The channel have been around there since YouTube was, was created, mm -hmm. but that was only because I wanted to give thumbs up and thumbs down mm -hmm. because that's what people do. Yep. And uh, so when I made my video, I started making my videos in 2015. Now I have, what is it? 1500 and 1500 and change videos. Do you do, a, do, you do them weekly, daily? Does it, on it schedule really or? varies. Okay. So like I'll do a show with Patricia on Wednesdays. I'll do a strange world thing on Tuesdays. Uh, if I do interviews, I'll, I'll usually post them if they let me. Wait, can I post this one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, please do. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, and then uh, I'll do promos for meetups. People will send me promo, nice. you know, saying, you know, and so they, they add up pretty quickly. Okay. Uh, but yeah, 15, 1500, I think at this point. And where can people find the YouTube? It just search for Mark Sarkin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, I mean, we'll have a link on all of our podcast stuff as well, but if people are just casually listening to this. It's uh, it's just called Mark Sargent, uh, S-A-R-G-E-N-T. -S you can also type in uh, Flat Earth and then just put the name Mark, mm -hmm. and eventually <laughs> I'll, I'll show up. <laughs> there's, 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 yeah, I, yeah, it's easy to find. Or you can just type in Flat Earth Clues. Okay. And yeah. that will take you to, because again, I don't care. Honestly, I don't care if you go to my channel. In fact, most of the, the reason why I, I got as much traction as I did is because I was a dork. And I made my, my videos Creative Commons license. And I just said, ah, I go, I don't. Well, because remember, I was yeah. fishing. I was fishing for academics to come at me. So I said, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I made a Creative Commons license. There are people out there, of course, they've changed the rules recently, that all they did is go after videos that are Creative Commons, which means you can put them on your channel. You can monetize them, mm -hmm. do the whole nine yards. And so there were three big video pe people that took the Flat Earth clues. They lumped them up and they put them on their channel and they name them something completely different. Like they are hiding God with the greatest lie ever. They are hiding God with the biggest lie ever under the dome full documentary. And the, I wasn't even mentioned. And, wow. and, and so people were, call, were writing me and saying, oh, I loved your movie. And I, and I said, <laughs> what, what movie? What, what, what are you talking about? Yeah, what, what movie do you speak of? And, I, and eventually I, I, I got tired of it. I said, look, send me a link to whatever you just watched. And then I started noticing these channels, and they had way more hits than, mm -hmm. uh, than my stuff. And they weren't even big channels. But the video got a lot of hits. So as, much, as many hits as I have 
on my channel, I have there's way more of them in mirrors. So you're like you just uh, at this point really want to kind of get the word out on that sort of end. Uh, oh yeah, with the YouTube channel and oh that. yeah yeah yeah. I don't I I wasn't. <laughs> yeah. I I got into flat earth to make money. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but you are doing a book. And have you done a book previously? I did. Uh, I'm one of the few people. Again, I, people have heard me joke about this. If if I ever live long enough to write an autobiography, it's going to be called unsolicited, <laughs> because <laughs> no, I've never had to reach out to anybody. They've all like uh, the the first book I wrote. I didn't even write. Uh, it was uh, just congratulations. Oh, thank you, thank you for that. <laughs> uh, it was a, a company, a, a publisher out of London, that said, "Oh, really liked your clues. Would would you mind if we turned it into a book?" And you, you hear from producers, and you're like, oh, whatever. Sure, yeah, "It's whatever. never, yeah, yeah, never yeah. going to happen." I go, "Do I have to do anything?" And they go, "No, just uh, here, answer this qu- some quick Q and As, and send us the transcripts of the clues, and we'll turn it into a book." And I honestly didn't think anything was going to happen. And then two months later, I got a big box, and uh, it, it was on Amazon, and they were selling it. Yeah, yeah, and I noticed so, that on the Amazon links. I was like, "Oh, that's sweet. yeah." That was kind of fun. <laughs> so eventually, because Flutter wouldn't die, and it just kept getting bigger and weirder, I got pressured to to write another one, and. Because people are saying, well, you know, you've collected enough stories over the last four years that maybe you should. And honestly, it does write itself. Yeah. Because there's so many cool things about Flat Earth. And I said, all right. So I just been sitting down and I have to have it done uh, pretty soon because uh, one, the, the conferences are going to start to rolling up. And they, the, the, the main conference in Dallas, they want it available. They want to actually yeah. have it for Dallas. So yeah, yeah don't, it's called, don't George R. R. Martin that shit. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. So, the, so the first one was called Flat Earth Clues: The Sky's the Limit, and this one's called Flat Earth Clues: End of the World. Oh, I know. Oh, very a little ominous. play on words there. So instead of Edge of the World, the End of the World, because uh... lots of people say, if the Earth's flat, why don't you just take a picture of the end of the world? You know, the the, the edge is like because you can't because you, you can't because you can't get out there. But, I heard a rumor. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Something about a cruise ship to the end of the world? Uh, Is that a thing? No, no, no. It's good. I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, so the cruise ship started... No, seriously, it's a good question. The, the cruise ship's thing started because Robbie Davidson wanted to do uh, a cruise. He wanted to do the conference. I know why he did it. I mean, it, you know, you can only... When you book hotel... When you, when you do conferences, they give you all sorts of free hotel rooms and yeah. hotel things. But what does that do? How many hotels can you possibly... But if you do it like a, a, like a cruise... Oh, that's a whole nother thing. That's a whole nother set of perks. So having, so he wanted to do a cruise out of Miami, you know, just a Caribbean, little Caribbean cruise. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was supposed to be in 2019 and he pushed it off to 2020. But before he did, a, a UK journalist got a hold of it and of course had to make the joke, which was, oh, well, he's going to yeah. take the cruise to the edge of the world. It's going to see the edge. They're going to go to the ice wall, right? You know, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. well, journalists nowadays do not, do not reference. They do not do due diligence on anything. So no. Just, so, <laughs> so it just took, it's yeah. like all of a sudden, next thing you know, I've got, I've got, 10, 12 different interviewers saying, it's like, tell us about, I mean, even TV people going, tell us about this cruise to the we, edge of the world. We wanted, yeah. You basically want to do the equivalent of a kiss cruise and just to go and have fun, and now it's turned into and blown hey, up because one person made a joke. Yeah. I just got a quote for the Star Trek cruise out of Miami. Oh, shit. That's really? 6,000 bucks for two people to go do that. Really? There's some money in these cruises. Dude, Dude so you're doing it? I would love to. Wait, how, <laughs> wait whoa, whoa, whoa. That seems a little steep for even a, I mean, you got to... Six thousand for a cruise? Is it like for two people? Oh, for two people, that's not terrible. Yeah, but you get to hang out with William Shatner. He's going to go on the cruise. I would do that to hang out. Oh, sweet! So you're going to get you're going to get norovirus. Oh yeah, Yeah, William Shatner. Congratulations, Ohura uh, Takai. I'm sorry, Takai won't do it. Well, he's not on well no no but he's still alive yeah yeah yeah. michelle yeah. nichols is still alive yeah and shatner is and i think that's the last uh one some of the deep space uh odo from oh, deep yeah, space yeah, nine still oh yeah those guys uh, and the weird furry dude from deep space nine he's the still weird there. furry dude chewbacca no yeah you don't most of the time you don't recognize him though in real life and give us another conspiracy what's oh, your other favorite one you want I'm so into okay. this. Are, are there conspiracies that intersect with the flat earth society that you see come up that uh, either you you are kin to or you're just knowledgeable of. Well, the big one, the big conspiracy that always comes up with flat Earth, and and it honestly, it's it's part of the the litmus test, which is Apollo. Remember the the American Moon Program, which has been that has been hacked up forever, ever since sorry, ever since they stopped in 1972. So what I'm what I'm saying is, uh, uh, whenever you talk to anybody that that may or you're you're wondering if you're feeling about flat Earth, the one of the first questions you already always ask them is, okay, do you believe the Americans went to the moon? 
or, or, yeah. or we went to the moon. And I'm if they, prime bait to be a flat earther because I don't think we went to the moon. Well, <laughs> and, and, a, and, and, that's, and that's good. And a lot of people didn't, including me. I mean, it's seriously, the, the footage has aged so terribly. And the still images are ridiculously... It's the sheer amount of them. Yeah, uh, out of place. <laughs> and, I mean, remember, when it comes to nerds and even movies, you know, all, he, all it takes is one guy in his underwear at 3 in the morning in Nebraska. Nitpicking ass. Yeah, and it's like, oh, yeah. And then he posts it, and that's it. You know, yeah. it's, it's over. Yeah. Uh, but it shouldn't be that way with, with moon landing. Uh, so when, if, somebody say, if somebody waves the flag, it's usually Americans. And they go, oh, yeah, red, white, and blue, Americans went to the moon. And military guys love wearing, you know, in fact, that's in the, one of the new shirts, which is country, you know, went to the moon. That's like a meme where you have the world map and it's all empty except for stars and stripes. And it's like, oh, yeah, I see what you did there. Um, <laughs> but if they, if they, but outside of the United States, it always surprised me how many people believe the Americans. That's the part that blew me away, which was like, you know, every, when I went to other countries, it's like, why did you believe the Americans? It's like, well, because it was on television. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's that. Oh, sorry. Anyway, so we people used to tear apart, tear it apart for a long time. But remember, the venue was much, much more narrow. So, yeah, you go to like a UFO convention and there would like be a booth. It'd be like somebody would be saying, oh, yeah, we didn't go to the moon. And here's why. But, you know, there was no Internet and stuff like that. So until social media came out, that's when, you know, it didn't get much play. And then when Flat Earth came out, it really changed it. Because for me, no, I didn't believe in the moon mission, but I couldn't figure out for the life of me. It's like I, the reasons wasn't good enough. Yeah. Meaning, why would you fake it? Why would you fake the moon mission? It's like, yeah, I get it. You know, wave the flag, go team, rah, rah, we're the best. I, I got that. It's a good reason, but it's not great. Then when I got into Flat Earth, I understood it. It's like, okay, now I get it. It's Distraction not, to prove. Well, it's not. No, no, no. It's, it, it's, it's easier than that, which is, well, one is the space reinforcement. But it's not that you wanted to fake the moon missions. You had to. If you don't fake the moon missions, you run into the potential of one of the major contractors and subcontractors getting into a space agency. Meaning, but people don't don't know that like NASA doesn't make their own parts. You know, there's a collection of parts from I don't know General Dynamics and Lockheed Martin and Boeing. Yeah, Boeing. <laughs> Boeing, yeah, yeah, huge. Yeah, Boeing's big into that. And they uh, and you, the last thing you want is like Boeing and Frito Lay to team up down the road <laughs> and say we want to put a Doritos flag on the moon. Let's make that happen. And then you run a real problem. So you militarize space and you you go rapid fire each time. Uh, in fact, it was one of my it's one of my science questions which I throw at people, which I say is because um, I oh, I'm sorry. Let me rattle off real fast for you. Uh, because I know you're into questions. This might help you a little bit. These guys are totally <laughs> open. Which is, no, there was a, a German television team got a hold of me, and they said, okay, we, we found a physicist to debate you down in Georgetown. It's like, right on, good. And, but we're not going to have you talk to him directly so you don't talk over each other. Uh, we're going to have you record some questions on video. We will send him the video. We will play it for him. He will record, and we'll just go back and forth. Like, you guys are never going to talk. It's like, all right, fine. That works for me. And they go, okay, come up with five science questions. I go, fine, great. So uh, real, real fast, uh, long distance photography, which we won't get into right now, uh, which, you know, way beyond what the curvature of the Earth would be. Gravity versus the vacuum of space, which, of course, you know, how is, where's the bleeding edge of space? Nobody in science can tell you. Uh, the eclipse shadow is too small. 2,000 mile wide object, 70 mile wide blackout zone. Absolutely impossible. Uh, the eclipse or the moon is generating a cold light. Which is, uh, but I, I'm getting to the, the, the fifth one that's most important. Uh, the g moon's generating a cold light, which means uh, it's actually warmer in the moon shade than it is in, mm -hmm. the, in the moonlight, up to like 13 degrees Fahrenheit, which is just freaks people out. Hmm. Doesn't, doesn't prove a flat earth, but it blows away the relationship between the sun and the moon. But the big one is the Apollo program, which is, okay, are the Van Allen radiation belts deadly? Yes or no? And it's a trap question. They can't win it. Which is, okay, if you say they are deadly, then how did the Americans make round trips through it without any protection whatsoever? Remember, the capsules was all made out of aluminum and uh, plastic. Mm -hmm. uh, the only things that stop radiation are um, gold, lead, and a whole bunch of water. Uh, reference Chernobyl. And then uh, and they didn't use any of these things. So how did they make it through those, those radiation belts? Uh, and nobody died. Nobody got uh, radiation poisoning. Nobody got cancer. There's still like five of them walking around today. Yeah. Yeah. And if you say, okay, they aren't deadly, then I point to the NASA.gov website where they made a video at the end of uh, 2014 for television where they talk about the Orion Project. It's called Orion Trial by Fire where they say, oh, yeah, the, the belts are so freaking deadly that we're not even going to test capsules with people in them until we can solve the radiation problem. And it's like, uh, wait, wait, you, you, you solved those already, though, in, in, in the 1960s. In fact, you solved them perfectly. So how are you having a radiation problem now? You did, did you uninvent the technology? I, did you, have you moved to a technology mm. that's obsolete? How, how are you doing this? I had thought the Van Allen radiation belt was on the other side of the moon. 
I thought that the moon was inside that. No, no. Well, no. Well, they're well, supposed to. Well, again, unfortunately, because I've been doing this for so long, I have absorbed so many little scientific factoids and religious factoids for that matter. Uh, but no, the, the Van Allen belts are supposedly go from about 400 miles up to about 60,000 miles up, if you believe it. And they're really, really thick. Well, the best speed we've got on anything is, if you believe it, is uh, something like 19,000 miles an hour, which means you're pushing about three hours in those belts each way. And then when you're coming back from the moon, if you believe the story, you're slowing down. Yeah. You're, hit, you're hitting the brakes going into that. So you're even spending more time. And it never, ever happens. Th those capsules should have been irradiated so much. Should have never been in the Smithsonian. I mean, you could yeah. be able to take a Geiger counter right now and be like, <laughs> yeah, just get Ooh. lit up. Yeah. So Ooh, I like that a lot. <laughs> that's I a, love that's it when Brogan's point. face changes. Yeah. He's like, oh, oh, snap. So anyway, so yeah, the, <laughs> the, the, big, the big conspiracy that dovetails in for every flat earther is Apollo and NASA. In fact, and the denial out there in the general public is amazing. I've had people literally come to me and say, okay, fine. The moon missions are trash. Hmm. I, but you can't tell me the ISS is fake. And I mean, seriously, the, is that's, the ISS fake? Well, well, it have to well, be. Look, look, it's seriously. I mean, this is that yeah, dude playing the guitar on the space station isn't real. Uh, or, <laughs> shit. Well, he, he's a real person because, because that's what you would send up as a guitar. The, uh, <laughs> and and every NFL jersey and gorilla suits for pranks and all this other and fresh fruit and yeah, and all not? this other stuff. I mean, sorry, no, no. The point was, it's like. If, if you're faking one thing, you have to fake everything because the punishment's going to be the same. If you, it's, it's the line from uh, Heat. Remember the movie Heat, which is well, if you shoot, uh, shoot one, yeah, if yeah. you shoot one guy, you might as well shoot them all yeah. because you're yeah. already in trouble for the one guy, which is if you faked Apollo, you might as well fake the ISS. You know, the ISS is absolutely ridiculous. Look up things like, uh, cause, move, forget like ISS green screen, which will come up right away. Things like ISS hairspray, which is why all the women are, have their hair completely permed, straight up like the Bride of Frankenstein. So <laughs> how is it that people can see it? Is that just part of the... Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, they can see it. There's something up there. No question. I mean, it's probably, it's military and it's up there. But are people living on it? No. Not a chance. Oh, okay. Uh, I can get behind that. Yeah. <laughs> well, and uh, also look up things like there was a guy debated uh, on air. He was down in the um, uh, Australian television station. He worked for, he was an American, worked for us. And he was asking about satellites. He goes, how are we talking right now? And it got really weird. And I go, uh, I don't know, look up something called the NASA High Altitude Balloon Program. It's been happening since the 50s. You can launch payloads up to four tons. He goes, yeah, I know. I work on it. And I go, and I'm like, I almost built a facial tick. I was going, you're helping me <laughs> by, by saying this. And as everybody knows this. I mean, the point is, if you can lift four ton payloads and keep them up there with hydrogen balloons, you know, because it has way more lift than helium then why in the world and that's pennies on the that's fractions of pennies on the dollar compared to a rocket why would you ever use anything on a rocket with the exception of you know like some geostationary thing that's halfway between you know here and the moon hmm. but love it. all right we are running out of time because we okay. got our all next right. interviews coming up but oh, Mark, seriously seriously thank you so much for spending so much oh, time yeah, with us yeah, yeah man this was awesome yeah this is insane we might actually pump this into two episodes i don't know no or just no, keep no, it no, or no, keeping no. it this is staying as one episode and it's going to be our go-to best of for a while i can smell it yeah. <laughs>